and uh, uh, immediately uh, before I I I am able I have not been able to see the list of attendees. Uh, so let me rely on the secretary of the portfolio committee first to say who has apologized, and then the leaders of the delegation. Uh, portfolio committee secretary. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, everybody. There's been an apology from the minister who will be attending cabinet meeting this morning. And the Deputy Minister Bapila will be meeting with Deputy Ministers on the land summit resolutions. That's the only two apologies we've received. Deputy Minister Nkadi Ming will be leading the delegation this morning. And we do form a quorum for the meeting. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> let me welcome you formally, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister, and, uh, uh, and your team. I can see the DG here, and, uh, but I don't want to risk I might leave others because uh, I don't see them as long as we know the leader of the delegation. Uh, today, uh, honorable members, oh, let me ask for apologies from members, if there's any apology. Member who might want to leave early or whatever, or oh, is not here. It looks like it's quiet. Mm, as we are aware, we, we have asked the uh, department to uh, update us or brief us about the interventions in terms of section 139, subsection 7 in Mangaou and Inokum Kijima. Uh, we were saying, uh, we, we would want to uh, get a sense now after that cabinet decision as to how far are they in terms of that intervention and what is coming out. So that's the agenda item. And uh, if there's anything uh, that I'm leaving out, I think uh, maybe the best is to say, can we, get somebody to propose that we proceed with this uh, item as was planned. Any I member move. moved by Honorable Msima? I second Any chair. Supported by Honorable Direko. Yeah, it was just formality so that we, we know we're dealing with the same. I will immediately, uh, without uh, wasting time, uh, but maybe just some comments to say, we are happy to note that uh, uh, there is uh, this uh, 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 revoking of uh, section 135. Uh, of uh, the Municipal Finance Management Act uh, 136, this uh, mandatory interventions generally in most of the municipalities that have not been doing well throughout. So would want to, it's an appeal to people who are already doing it to say let's let's focus on that it will it will also help to guide our oversight and uh, even not to wait for oversight but those who are given responsibility to act on that so that generally is that statement because it looks like finance financial management issues in municipalities that translate to service delivery that is not to the point where people can be happy. 
uh, it's, it's our main challenge. So any attempts to deal with that would be greatly appreciated. But then let's focus on uh, Mangao and Inokum Kichima. Can I hand over to you, uh, Deputy Minister uh, Gadi Meng? Good morning, Chairperson, and thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. And let me start by greeting members of the committee and uh, uh, the team COPTA. Um, you are correct, Chair. We appreciate the opportunity to be given the chance to come in front of the portfolio to look into the progress and update with regard to the Council of Mangaung Metropolitan Municipality and Inokam Kijima. Just before I hand over to um, the Director General and the team, I will just uh, refresh the memory of the committee that uh, uh, in 2020, uh, the Minister of Finance um, replaced the report in cabinet and a decision was subsequently taken to place Mangawu Metro in terms of section 1397 of the constitution where amongst other things we a, a, a financial recovery plan was imposed and an implementation of that recovery plan in line with the Municipal Finance Management Act. And the team then assigned to the national cabinet uh, the representatives uh, to look broadly, not only into finance matters, but governance, finance included human resources and service delivery. And the national representative team is led by Mr. Maseko. Of course, from COCTA, we deployed uh, Mr. Mutla Shuping and uh, uh, as a city manager and he's working with uh, a few HODs who he found at the time and subsequently some of the contracts expired. Uh, the departments, human settlements, national treasury environment, transport and water and sanitation also seconded senior officials to Mangao and the first such uh, a, a deployment of 137 was done in line with the district development model where not only COPTA and National Treasury, but all offices or departments with their expertise were brought in. In relation to Inok Mukijima, the PEC, which is the Eastern Cape province, had uh, intervened in terms of section 139, subsection one and subsection five of the constitution. They also mandated the financial recovery plan. Contrary to a bit of a, a service delivery and good governance that is beginning to grind positively in Mangaung, uh, Inokum Kijima is faced with uh, special difficulties, uh, particularly even the past council and the subsequent council of November 2021, uh, which ushered new demons, uh, administration. We still have challenges, but we've been able to induct We've been able to get an appointment of the National Cabinet representative in May, who started in June. So we're still at the establishment phase with a lot of difficulties of lack of cooperation uh, from the municipality. But the key to that is the assessment of the state of the municipality, which has not yet been finally concluded, uh, but also the final uh, conclusion of the uh, recovery plan in terms of the detailed segment of it. I will now chair with your permission wish to hand over to the Director General to lead with the presentation on the progress gained so far in the two respective municipalities. Thank you, Honorable Chair, for the opportunity and Honorable Members, good morning. Thank you. Um, good morning to our Honorable Chairperson and good morning to all the members, the Honorable yeah. Members of the Committee. And I also want to greet our colleagues from National Treasury and also the COCTA colleagues this morning. Um, Chair, to also save time, I will then, from where DM has left, wish just to acknowledge the close cooperation that we've had between uh, COCTA and National Treasury um, and other departments to really just restore the stability in the metro, that is Mangaro. And we have Deputy Director General um, Ms. Malijeng um, here with us and some other senior management from her department in attendance in, and in the city. 
And as the DM has also indicated, uh, the Enoch Kajima municipality is, is also under national um, intervention with the national cabinet representative team on the ground. Uh, and they are also seized with the responsibility of stabilizing the municipality. So Mr. Matla Shupi um, has been deployed as the acting city manager uh, from the national uh, DCOG and uh, chairperson, with your permission, will be presenting the progress report with regards to the Mangaroo Metro intervention. And he'll also be supported by the um, National Cabinet Representative, Mr. Paul Maseko. And then uh, Mr. Paul Mohale will deliver them a presentation on the progress regarding the Inokajima interventions to the committee. And he'll also be supported by the National Cabinet, uh, Dr. Monday Tom. So uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and I'd like to then hand over to, to each of them, starting with Mr. Mutlashupi. Yes, I was muted. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable uh, Members, and also the DG and Deputy Minister. Uh, I will proceed with making a presentation on behalf of the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs and also with National Treasury. Uh, the presentation is as follows. Can I move to the next slide, please? This is just uh, to the purpose. And the next slide is in relation to the outline of uh, my presentation, uh, which I will not read for purposes of, uh, of time. And uh, I will shoot straight to the background of my presentation. Uh, <clears throat> Chairperson, as already indicated, uh, this municipality is under section 139. And uh, uh, the department, the, the two departments then sent a multi-sectoral teams that were deployed and I was then deployed as the acting city manager or the, uh, acting municipal manager. And we had a team that was also assembled from various departments with uh, <clears throat> the acting head of engineering from MISA, uh, the acting corporate services uh, 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 from uh, National COCTA, the CFO from National Treasury, the HOD of Human Settlement from the Department of um, Human Settlement, and uh, the Acting Head of Waste and Fleet from DFFE, and also <clears throat> National Treasury also uh, seconded uh, a transport specialist. Uh, the team initially arrived uh, in April and the other team members arrived uh, around uh, uh, May and June. And uh, the National Cabinet Representative team also arrived uh, around, uh, <clears throat> around uh, 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 June, July. And we have now a full complement of uh, the two teams and the National Cabinet Representative comprises of Mr. Masepo. There is also a finance expert and also governance and institutional uh, expert, Mr. Mapoloba and the service delivery expert, which is Mr. Eric Ngomani. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, what we did in order for us uh, to have uh, a very focused uh, 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 approach to our intervention, because we were of the opinion that uh, we need to have some sort of uh, a focused uh, approach, uh, taking into account that uh, there was a team that uh, assembled some sort of a status quo report of the municipality. And in order for the intervention to be effective, we then zoomed into the following. One, we realized that we need to pay attention to decrease the high overtime and the acting expenditure of the municipality. We had to fill the vacant position we had to train councillors and administration on uh, local government legislation. 
We had to appoint the Municipal Planning Tribunal and Appeals Authority Tribunal. <clears throat> we also had to fast track the formation of the Maroon Transport Forum to support the development of the city integrated transport plans. We had also to look at how we are going to be reusing the material that we use for resealing, <clears throat> especially in the gravel roads. So we will reseal the roads and also use that material uh, in, in re-graveling the roads, especially in the township areas. We also have to look at the integrated approach on utilization of the APWP, PEP, and also CWP. We had to implement the fleet management system. We had to strengthen business partnerships. We had to put systems and processes in place in all directorates of the municipality. We had to review the organizational structure. We had to review and implement the current financial recovery plan. We had to improve revenue collection and management. We had to implement job cut, job cut management system, and we had to strengthen intergovernmental relations by way of a DDM model. Now, these are the issues that we then did uh, in relation to what we have identified as a challenge and the progress that we have made. The cause for the instability of the municipality, obviously, as per the report that was then given to cabinet and uh, through our two ministers, it was relating to the municipality having elements of lack of poor and, and, and poor oversight in governance systems, political instability, factionalism, high vacancy rate, as I've already indicated, uh, low staff morale, poor work ethics, non, no professionalism, prolonged disciplinary cases, high litigation costs, and poor planning for transitional measures. So those were the issues that really caused national, caused national cabinet to intervene in terms, in terms of section 1397. The next slide. <coughs> Uh, now, I am going to be presenting on what was the status quo and the progress that we have made so far. In relation to the high vacancy rate, we have started to recruit uh, for the positions of senior managers. We advertised the position of a municipal manager, which uh, closed on the 26th of August, and council set on the 31st of August 2021, where they appointed a selection panel, and uh, the shortlisting is going to be done tomorrow. I must also indicate that um, the municipality also included myself as part of the panel for the appointment of the uh, city manager. We have also approached LG CETA to provide support with funding for the screening and competency assessment of uh, the uh, uh, municipal manager. And uh, we are also uh, in the process of reviewing the organizational structure. And as soon as that is being done, we will proceed to advertise for the uh, head of departments. I must also indicate, uh, honorable uh, members, that uh, we have also agreed uh, with uh, the executive mayor that uh, in the meantime that we are looking at reviewing the organizational structure, we need to advertise for the HODs that will, in, in, uh, under normal circumstances, not be affected by the organizational review structure. Like your uh, CFO, we will proceed this week to advertise for the CFO and for the uh, uh, director or HOD corporate services and, and, and HOD uh, uh, engineering. So those ones which we know that uh, they will not be affected by the structure will also proceed now immediately advertising. Next slide, please. Uh, in relation to lack and misplaced capacity and poor commitment within the administration, uh, we are now developing because of uh, the regulations that have come into effect on the 1st of July, we are now developing the individual performance management framework, which we have uh, submitted to LLF, which we have resuscitated because it was dysfunctional when we arrived. And uh, we will be sharing this uh, uh, document to all the relevant stakeholders for inputs and uh, to make sure that uh, we, we finalize it and uh, submit to council for adoption. Next slide, please. We are also <clears throat> uh, implementing the municipal staff regulations that, that, as I've already indicated, that came into effect on the 1st of July. We are reviewing the macro structure and we intend to forward this and, and finalize this uh, uh, because we have received already comments from COCTA and from National Tre Treasury. And we also consulted this, as I've already indicated, with the uh, uh, LLF. Now, with, 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 with this uh, regulations coming into effect, firstly, in relation to the macro structure, 
we are proposing seven uh, departments instead of nine, which is uh, at the moment. And uh, that particular uh, 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 suggestion and proposal was also adopted at LLF. We have refined these um, structures uh, in, in this proposed form to be in line with the municipal staff regulations. I must indicate that uh, there was an issue in relation to the ghost workers in the offices of public office bearers. We have now refined this to be in line with the regulations. So all the people that were appointed in the offices of political office bearers, we have uh, terminated our contract and we have appointed on an ad hoc basis or temporary basis, people to be acting those positions. But we have also made provision in the organizational structure to be in line with the municipal staff regulations as per the composition of uh, uh, the offices of the public office bearers. As uh, we have already, as I've already indicated, uh, Honorable Chairperson, that the organiz organizational structure of the municipality was not fit for purpose. And we have now refined it and proposals have been made. And we have made progress in relation to uh, LLF having adopted the proposed structure. We will then be taking it to section 80, to MACO and to council for adoption. And we envisage that this process will be completed around October, 2022. Next slide, please. I have uh, also indicated that this particular uh, 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 work that we have been doing in relation to council and council committees. We, I'm sorry, let me just switch off uh, this uh, phone. Thank you, I'm sorry, Honorable Chairperson. In relation to council and council committees, we have resuscitated the sitting of all council committees. Now, in all other items to be presented before council, they do find, they are presented at the executive management team first, which I chair, then they are being referred to the section 80 and section 79 committees, which will then propose to the, to MACO and subsequently uh, the WIPARI will be sitting to look into the items to be submitted to council and uh, the items will then be uh, uh, referred to council for adoption. Then the, the items will be referred to council for adoption. That has been effective since uh, our arrival in April. And I must indicate that we have submitted uh, the audit, the annual financial uh, statements on time. After we also went through the processes of submitting it to the audit committee and uh, uh, subsequently uh, referring it to the auditor general. And that was done regularly. In the long and the short of it is that council committees are functional, are sitting, the VPARI is sitting and uh, giving direction and uh, uh, the, the, the committees are then deliberating on the matters. One factor that I must include here is that uh, the, in that meeting, uh, the last meeting of council, the chief whip, there was a notice of motion, uh, motion of no confidence from uh, the Freedom Front and uh, uh, the chief whip was subsequently removed. We are still to reconvene, the, 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 the speaker is to reconvene council, so that council uh, must then appoint uh, the chief whip. I must in, inform the honorable uh, uh, members that uh, that, has got an effect of uh, destabilizing uh, the political arm of the municipality. And because that particular motion succeeded of the chief of removing the chief whip, the DA has already now also submitted another motion of no confidence against the mayor. And because uh, I, I, I indicate that uh, because of the success of that motion of no confidence against the chief whip, this is likely also to affect uh, the outcome of this notice of motion against the mayor. That has got a serious effect in the destabilization of the political arm of this council. Next slide, please. Uh, with regard to the disciplinary uh, uh, board and the risk committees that were not, not established, we have, uh, as I've already indicated that we are reviewing the organizational structure. We are also have shortlisted for the disciplinary committee and risk committee 
And uh, we had uh, interviews that were conducted on the week of 19 September now, currently as we are sitting. So we, we are envisaging that at the end of this week, we will have the disciplinary board and also the risk committee established. So that's the progress that we have made in relation to that particular matter. Next slide, please. Now, uh, what we found out was also that there was no document management uh, 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 that also was impacting on the audit outcome. The municipality at the moment has got an uh, uh, unqualified audit outcome, and uh, we are trying to improve on the documentation, uh, 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 documentation so that uh, when the audit commences like it has already done now, we have uh, uh, a confidence that uh, we move uh, in relation to what the executive mayor has uh, uh, also uh, established in relation to have a vision of in the next three years that we should have uh, a clean audit from the, for the Metro. Now, in relation to this, we have also uh, 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 started to develop a corporate calendar for the strategic meetings of the municipality and committees of council to be sitting. We are also doing contract management to, make, to ensure that uh, the bid committees are functional and that procurement processes are followed. We are also envisaging to have, with the assistance of National Treasury and COCTA, and also a, a cities network, that we have our strategic plan mid-October, and uh, COCTA is assisting us to review all policies to be in line with the municipal staff regulations. And we will also be conducting a headcount for employees because we are having some allegations of uh, uh, ghost workers and also the issue in relation to uh, the amalgamation of the municipality. At the time when Naledi was amalgamated to Mangawu, there was no merchant placing that was completed. So we are now uh, in the process together with LLF in the process of uh, finalizing the merchant place, uh, placing and also to conduct headcount to ensure that uh, 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 we eliminate any possibility of ghost workers. We have appointed a company of, uh, of, of lawyers to investigate the UIFWs, and we envisage that uh, uh, this will be, the report will soon be finalized and uh, be submitted to MPEC that will then deal with the matter and uh, there will be consequence management after the report has been received and the report shall subsequently be taken to council for adoption. I must indicate that uh, I have personally had a meeting with uh, the firm because uh, we were not uh, satisfied with the pace in which uh, these investigations were conducted and I've uh, gotten assurance that we will soon be having the report so that we can submit it to MPEG. Next slide, please. Uh, there is also lack of synergy among political parties and intra-party issues. Uh, I've already indicated the, uh, the issue of uh, the, the uh, uh, motions of no confidence that will uh, cause a lot of uh, instability in the municipality. And we need more synergy among the Troika so that uh, there should be cohesion and uh, political direction given to the administration. There are weak internal controls and poor focus on fighting incidents of fraud and, uh, fighting incidents of fraud and corruption. We are working tirelessly to ensure that uh, we deal with this particular matter of uh, corruption in the institution. And we are also looking at how we are going to revamp uh, the, the supply chain uh, uh, unit of the municipality to eliminate all, any possibility of uh, fraud and corruption in that particular end. There is low staff morale. I have started uh, a visit to all uh, sites of the municipality, which uh, was one was scheduled for today this morning uh, to ensure that uh, we reassure the staff members that we will ensure that um, uh, everything is set and the conditions are set for the satisfaction of uh, the workforce of the municipality. And uh, we have uh, succeeded in some sort of stabilizing the uh, labor unrest. The only challenge that we have, which comes from time to time, especially during month eight, is the issue of uh, overtime and the acting capacity, which we are dealing with uh, uh, on a daily basis. And we, are, we have taken a decision, a firm decision that uh, we are not going to bash in relation to us eliminating this um, uh, uh, overtime that was uh, in, in embedded in the municipality for employees to be subsidizing their salaries through uh, uh, overtime. I've, with, with this overtime, uh, there was also the ballooning of the employee costs, which we are dealing with at the moment, and that causes 
us to be attentive in physically in relation to us taking these decisions. Uh, we are starting to engage through the Masego stakeholder management so that we, we make people to understand the reason why we are here and uh, for them to join us and support us in trying to uh, better the image of the, of the municipality. The capital grants, uh, there were even instances where money was uh, then taken back to the national fiscals. We have put in mechanisms in place to spend on our conditional grants. And we have also, since our arrival, not utilized any money of the conditional grant for operational matters. We make sure that there is, uh, on a month-to-month -month ba uh, month -month basis, enough money for us to cater for operational costs. Sandlec, which is uh, the entity of the municipality for the provision of electricity, is in disarray. All board members have resigned, and uh, uh, there are only two members left. We have taken the matter to section 80, that is recommended to council for the disbandment of this board and for the new board to be, to be appointed. We were yesterday at the uh, provincial scopa where we made commitment, the, the executive mayor made commitment that uh, in our next council meeting, this matter, because it has already set that section 80, will then be sitting before a council for a decision to be taken. Next slide, please. We have um, adopted the budget. The budget was not adopted, uh, but now the budget is adopted and it's a funded budget after the uh, benchmarking was done with National Treasury. Uh, we have also done the revenue management strategy that we are working together with the NCR, the revenue management. We have, we have started the disconnections in our top 100 defaulters to ensure that uh, we collect. Uh, we are also profiling critical vacancies to ensure that revenue value chain activities such as billing are streamlined by conducting meta audits. And uh, we are working with systems that we are putting in place to ensure coordination on meter, uh, meter replacement and installation between finance and engineering so that there is synergy between the two departments. We are also looking at uh, our tariffs, which are not cost effective. And uh, we will look at the policy review, tax policy review, so that uh, we, 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 we ensure that there is synergy in, in, in that particular era also. Uh, from the 30, as of the 31st of July, 2022, our collection rate was at 74.3. We are not happy with this because the norm is that we should be at 95. But with regard to the measures that we are putting in place, we think that we will improve on the percentage in relation to the collection rate. The next slide, please. The, we are verifying the indigent register. We have already submitted in our last council meeting incremental inclusion in the uh, 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 indigenous register. We are looking at processes, like I've said, of uh, ensuring contract management and that bid committees should operate uh, properly. And I must indicate that national treasury comes handy here. Whenever I receive uh, reports from bid committees, we discuss with them with the team from national treasury to ensure that the uh, processes were properly followed and that uh, we appoint in accordance with the regulations of the Municipal Finance Management Act. We want to make sure that everything is done above board. Uh, we have also issued a circular on uh, cost containment issues. And we said that uh, non-service uh, procurement should not be done at the moment until such time that our finances are in good shape. We have also taken a, 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 an audit on the payroll and we need to move this payroll from corporate services to finance so that uh, there is synergy between the two. Because as matter stands, payroll sits in corporate services, whereas the actual payment is in finance. And there is the disjuncture in relation to the processes that are there. We are on a daily basis, myself and Tatema uh, Sukum, on a daily basis um, uh, monitoring the cash flow and expenditure uh, control of the municipality. Uh, the finance staff nominated for national treasury training have uh, obtained minimum staff, uh, uh, minimum uh, standards uh, training. Uh, we are also working on gross financial misconduct. There are cases that we have uh, gone through. And with regard to this, we have detected through uh, our monitoring that uh, some of the invoices that were given to us, especially from lawyers, were duplications. And uh, we have started to take actions in relation to that. And uh, also with regard to looking into why certain amount were written off by the previous administration. And uh, we are also looking at uh, lawyers 
that are charging as tariffs that are not allowed by the law society and also with regard to compliance to the service level agreement that we have signed with those lawyers. I've indicated there is there is a long list of litigation in this municipality. We are trying by all means to reduce those uh, litigation cases and uh, disciplinary cases. But the other issue here that we are to grapple with is this lawyers overcharging us. And we are dealing with that because we have found out that there is that particular uh, 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 something used that is, that, that is wrong and, and, and eating the finances of the municipality. Next slide, please. I've indicated that uh, <clears throat> we have uh, we had a problem with unspent USDG grant to the effect that 30 million was then taken back to the national fiscal and we have applied for a rollover. We have we have developed a procurement plan that has to be adhered to. It was also included in our SDBIP and in our performance agreement that I have signed with the executive mayor and all acting HODs have signed with my good selves. So we are going to monitor spending uh, of, on the USDG grants because we are aware that uh, the neighborhood uh, development fund was also <clears throat> returned to the national fiscals because of under expenditure. So this is very, this is very critical because the municipality need these finances in order for us to improve on the infrastructure that we have. So we cannot afford the possibility of this fund being returned to the national fiscal. So we have given it a priority. I've said that we have uh, submitted on time, credible annual financial statements to the Auditor General. We have, we have now started making arrangements with our creditors in relation to how we pay them. Uh, honorable members, uh, service providers have not been paid from 2016, 17, 18, 19, 2020 to date. We are now making agreements to pay those outstanding uh, invoices. Uh, we are making sure that uh, the grant, uh, the conditional grant expenditure is done within seven days after the invoices have been submitted. The in-house uh, engineer who is uh, from MISA, who is also the acting HOD is making sure that uh, certificates are signed after verification and payment is made within the seven day period. Next slide, please. Uh, <clears throat> we are also looking at integrating all the systems in the municipality because there are a lot of systems that are there. We have uh, in the process advertised um, for the head of IT so that we look into the systems that are all over the shore in the municipality. We have revised if I've reset, uh, the, the procurement plan and uh, uh, we are repairing fleet to reduce outsourcing. One of the major issues that we found in the municipality was uh, with regard to the, the, this 80% fleet not functional. We have set aside 10 million that we received from St. Lake for the repairs of this vehicle. There has been tremendous improvement in relation to the vehicles being, being made operational. And that has been done internally with our own uh, mechanics. We only buy parts and the mechanics internally are now repairing the vehicles. This will improve the service delivery and also make us not to rely on um, service providers for, 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 for provision of services. Because in the past, the municipality relied on external uh, uh, service providers and employees of the municipality were not utilized profitably to deliver services because there was no fleet. Now, as matters stand, we have fleet that is operational. On a weekly basis, we receive reports from the uh, head, of, uh, uh, head of department of uh, fleet of the numbers of vehicles that are being put on the road. And that has, in actual fact, uh, saved the municipality millions of friends. <clears throat> we are also introducing the shift system so that we reduce this reliance on overtime. So once we have the finalization at LLF on the shift system, we'll be able to also save the municipality money in relation to this overtime that has been worked. So overtime also, once we have vehicles, you will also not be having overtime. And once you have the shift system, you won't be having overtime. So that particular uh, uh, intervention by the, the intervention team is assisting the municipality a lot. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now, this is uh, what uh, we have um, 
uh, in relation to the outstanding debt. We have had a successful meeting with um, uh, the Office of the Premier in relation to payment of the debt owed to the municipality 1.3 billion that has been uh, uh, owed by uh, the departments to the municipality. We are also looking at, uh, we have agreed with the Office of the Premier that uh, they will, they have already made payment of 33 million. They are working towards um, paying us uh, 86 million, but this 86 million will be shared between us and Centlec, and that will also, they, they, they gave a commitment of making payment on the current account. So there has been some improvement made in relation to this particular debt. We have also, like I've indicated, that we have profiled 100, top 100 businesses that are owing the municipality, and we are cutting. We are, we are enforcing credit control measures uh, to ensure that uh, we disconnect. We, we have a, a, a partnered with Centlec. Now, Centlec is cutting on electricity. We are cutting on water and other services, and people are now coming uh, to make payments. The, the main problem also here with regard to the six billion that we are being owed, that is from the uh, uh, households. We have issued notices, and we think here we will require services of a service provider because we do not have internal capacity to be dealing with uh, the uh, credit control in households in all the areas of the metro. Uh, this is where we, we look in, we're looking into <clears throat> using the similar cutting, uh, especially in households where they can afford to pay for services. Next slide, please. With regard to human settlement, we have uh, uh, spoken to SRAM to deal with uh, the management of the flats on the uh, middle income uh, uh, housing that we have. Uh, at the Hillside project, we have mixed development project which is underway. We have concluded uh, the land transfer. Uh, I'm engaging with SRA and the developer of the matter to ensure that we fast track the issue of land. Uh, we have 22 rental schemes belonging to the municipality. The challenge here is that people are not paying for the lease. And, um, and whenever we do the credit control on those areas, there are sporadic uh, unrest and protests coming to the headquarters of the municipality and closing down the municipality. We need to involve the political arm of the municipality to support the effort that's been taken by administration to ensure that uh, in these 22 rental schemes, people do pay uh, the minimum uh, uh, rental that is uh, that has been set aside. Uh, Vista 3, uh, we are on, on track, we are spending, and we'll soon be constructing the top structures because there's, uh, there's been some improvement in relation to the bulk services in the area. Uh, uh, we are uh, awaiting housing topologies in relation to uh, Vista Park 3, in relation to the uh, 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 land acquisition. And uh, I have instructed uh, the planning uh, uh, division to fast track the processes of finalizing this so that we can proceed with the construction in the, in the Vista, uh, Vista Park frame. We have issued over 3,000 title bits up to date, and the others uh, will soon be issued by the Minister of Human, uh, Human Settlement once uh, we have finalized uh, the process of acquiring them from our lawyers. Next slide, please. This is to show at Vista Park 3 the improvement and the development in relation to the bank services. So this is what is the, the situation at the moment. We are monitoring contract managing this so that uh, we finalize the laying out of bulk so that we can, we can start with the top structure. Next slide, please. We, <coughs> with Hello, regard to, Hello. Thank you, uh, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, with regard to lack of compliance with SPROMA to establish the municipal planning tribunal, as I've already quoted that we are working towards that. And also the, there was a backlog on the building control. Uh, we have now, uh, the council, uh, the municipality has approved uh, the municipal planning tribunal. And uh, we are now to advertise for the appeal tribunal. Uh, we have also, since our arrival, started to make the electronic submission of uh, the applications, and we are fast tracking that. And uh, we have uh, received uh, uh, also support from Cities Network and also from the uh, uh, Jobek Metro to enable us to fast track 
the uh, processing of applications. We have uh, uh, information sharing and also support from National Treasury and from the World Bank. And we are making sure that we utilize that so that the backlog in the building uh, plans are then uh, fast-tracked. Uh, 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 and the planning has been instructed to fast-track the finalization. <clears throat> the building control backlog we, we invested to finalize by the 14th of October, 2022. Mm -hmm. We have been offered values to assist with the scanning and the building plans so that we can also fast track uh, the processes of valuation. And those are the actions that we have taken in relation to uh, the backlog on the building control uh, in the municipality. Next slide, please. Uh, <clears throat> with regard to planning, the fresh produce market, what we found out when we arrived was a poor contract and lease management. <clears throat> we, have, we have refurbished the fresh produce market, uh, market and there has been some uh, uh, profit made. Uh, there has been, as, as indicated here, that uh, this is one area where a tremendous improvement has been made in terms of revenue collection or revenue that has been achieved from this particular first produce market. We have also we are, uh, requested the municipality to reinvest the process to making sure that the market maintains itself and develops itself in a manner that is profitable. So we are not taking money from the fresh produce to utilize it in other areas, but we are using it, we are investing it in the same uh, fresh uh, produce market for improvements and for maintenance. We have also started the process of uh, the integrated transport plan, and we have taken the IPTN, which is the integrated bus uh, rapid system, and including it in the planning uh, section. And uh, <clears throat> We are, are envisaging that uh, revenue to be generated should be at uh, an amount of 5.5 million that will come handy for the municipality to be able to reinvest that for service delivery purposes. Next slide, please. Uh, with regard to solid waste, <clears throat> the, what we found was the poor waste and fleet management, non-maintenance of fleet, overutilization of service providers, and staff instability. We have looked into this and we have analyzed the status quo in the fleet uh, management system. I've indicated that there is a vehicles uh, replacement strategy that is finalized and we are now uh, revamping our fleet with our uh, own resources and not taking it to gar garages to be fixed. We're using it in-house. <clears throat> and we have given vehicles to, for, for the cleanup processes to Mangaung, uh, Bluefontein, Tabancho, and Busabelo. We have involved local political parties, including uh, other civic organizations, and they have partnered with, with us to clean uh, the metro. We have stabilized the fleet. We are continuously engaging union and the senior management to ensure that uh, solid waste, which was a problem in the municipality, is attended to. So we also get now the support from organized labor to ensure that the workers also put more effort in the waste collection of, uh, of in the metro. Next slide, please. Uh, <clears throat> with regard to the landfill sites, we have at least cleared the road towards the southern landfill sites. And uh, we have also deployed law enforcement to ensure that uh, people do not uh, uh, pu uh, uh, put uh, refuse on the site of the landfill site. Uh, we are cleaning this area on a continuous basis. The problem with regard to this southern landfill site, honorable members, is that uh, uh, it has reached its age and we need to then get another landfill site. The previous administration did not make application for the new license for this particular site, and that gives us a problem. And there is also, there are also squatters on top of the landfill sites, uh, mostly of uh, uh, illegal uh, uh, nationals. We have uh, had meetings with uh, Home Affairs, we have also had meetings necessary with, this, with the army because uh, uh, there's a lot of illegal activity taking place on top of the landfill sites because there are shippings on top of the landfill sites. And when you remove uh, the people, there is resistance. So we want all left, we have uh, made arrangements with law enforcement agencies to ensure that we, 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 we evict these people. We are awaiting the eviction order from our lawyers. And once we receive that, we will really get into space with law enforcement to remove 
those people on top of the landfill sites. DFF has already appointed um, a service provider to assist us with uh, the landfill sites. The problem that we have was uh, the contractor uh, could not start um, at the envisage time and we are putting pressure on the DFFE for tougher uh, uh, project management on this uh, particular service provider. On the uh, land, Northern Landfill site, we have, uh, uh, we have cleared the, 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 the road and access to that site. Uh, the entrance is also cleared and uh, we are ensuring that um, that is also maintained on a, on a weekly basis. We have also appointed on a full-time basis, the manager responsible for this two landfill sites. There are two managers on site that we have deployed on the two sites to ensure that uh, we get proper weekly reports in relation to what is happening in those uh, two landfill sites. Next slide, please. Next slide. This is what uh, we have done in relation to solid waste. I have indicated that we have partnered with business. We have started with the cleanup campaign on the 27th of June, 2022. We have also utilized uh, CWP and PEP to clean the city and to clean the, the, the whole of Mangaung. Uh, business have been very uh, positive in relation to partnering with us. We have also partnered uh, with uh, uh, the Cheetahs Rugby Club. Remember that we hosted a very international, successful international uh, game. Uh, through that particular partnership, we have continued to, uh, uh, to partner with them to clean, uh, also to have the recycling stations and uh, also to involve SMMEs for recycling purposes. We have partnered with National Real Estate. They've given us uh, resources, human resources, vehicles for the cleaning purposes. Government Garage has given us vehicles for cleaning purposes. St. Lake has given us uh, money and also the uh, 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 <clears throat> fleet for us to be uh, cleaning the, the metro. We have also utilizing effectively PEP for cleaning purposes. We have partnered with MTN, Interstate Bus Company, CUTS, the university, and Anchor of Hope. They're all part of uh, the, the partnership that we are entering. The photo there on the side shows uh, the mayor and the team and the HOD with regard to that Coca-Cola partnering with us in cleaning the city and Vodacom cleaning the city. So there is that particular partnership that is successful that is assisting in the process of cleaning the city. Next slide, please. That is the cleaning that we have done. Uh, that is the landfill site before and after, after we have cleared. That is also here, the meeting that we have with communities to encourage them to clean and not to uh, uh, put rubbish all over the city. So we are having that awareness campaign that we are now doing. That's PEP, uh, that was also uh, assisting us with the cleaning campaign. So you can see everyone, including the mayor, the speaker, was also part and parcel of the cleaning campaign of the city. If you can come to the city now, it is not the same as it was three, four, five months ago. The next slide, please. <clears throat> solid waste, uh, in conclusion, to, in relation to solid waste, uh, <clears throat> we will also be looking at uh, the proper schedules that we are receiving from the teams on the ground to ensure that there is proper and regular refuse collection. Because it does not help when you, when you remove the bed locks and there is no proper refuse collection. So we are now monitoring the program. On the, on the, uh, the left-hand side, you can see that uh, that is a typical program that we're having and the report that we're having on a daily basis in relation to uh, uh, collection. Because we have realized that uh, we need to address this issue of lack of supervision of people who are working uh, on a daily basis, uh, open bags all over the city, we need to look at that. The erratic collection where other areas were not being prioritized, the supervision and monitoring and the fleet status. <clears throat> we have at the moment, we have uh, resuscitated at least 28 compact trucks that were not operational. We have put them on the road after the intervention of the money that we put aside to, 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 to refurbish the fleet that we are having. Next slide, please. Now, with regard to the next one, which is water and sewer infrastructure. In summary, <clears throat> this is the big elephant in the room for the Metro. One, there is asbestos water pipes. And we all know, honorable members, that with regard to this, asbestos water pipes, there will always be leakages in relation to these pipes and sewerage outages. 
there is high vacancy rate because for five years, there's not been appointment that they've been made. So the organogram of this municipality is a diamond-like organogram, whereas it should be a pyramid-like where most of the workers should be that of service delivery. So there's not been appointment being made. That is why there was over-reliance on the service providers. There's insufficient budget allocation. We have, we have catered for that in our budget now. There was insufficient unreliable feed allocation to water department. Uh, <clears throat> Remember that uh, National Treasury also put a bans in the uh, procurement processes that also affected the rhythm in relation to us attending to the uh, uh, water leakages and also the sewage spillages. Uh, we have now looked into the water regulation network, get ourselves a study conducted in relation to that. We have uh, draft water maintenance and rehabilitation plan. We have compiled that and we are adhering to that. We have refurbished water supply system <clears throat> uh, with regard to this, all this pipe best in all over the city. We are procuring uh, uh, the contractor to ensure that uh, we get supply of material regularly and we have stock uh, in our, <clears throat> our, 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 our buildings to ensure that from time to time when there are uh, reports of uh, 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 best, we are able to attend it to, uh, to it. Uh, 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 immediately. We are also having uh, uh, to ensure that we revisit our tenure water conversation demand management so that we deal with uh, the challenges that we have. The elephant in the room here is that uh, we are paying 80 million rand a month to bloom water on water. And uh, the, the non-revenue water or water losses that we have is very enormous. And it's because of the underground structures that we have, uh, infrastructure that we have, that is not uh, assisting the municipality. We need to get funding to revamp all the underground structure, uh, infrastructure of the municipality. Next slide, please. <clears throat> we have conducted, I've already indicated that, <clears throat> with regard to the uh, uh, ongoing repairs on the fleet, I'm saying that up to so far, we have got 15%. We have streamlined procurement processes. We have resurfaced now as of yesterday, 32 kilometers of uh, the road and also portals repairs. We have partnered with Sandra. Minister Mbalula was here last week on Friday to launch a Valasong project to ensure that portals in the city and in the highways get into the city are then repaired. So we have made some tremendous strides in relation to the portholes and also the resealing of the road. That's already that by yesterday we had 32 uh, kilometer uh, uh, a target that we have, we have done. We are refurbishing water supply systems and we are also uh, now advertised for, for the project of muscle sport uh, water uh, treatment plant. And once that comes into operation in the coming six to eight months, the municipality will be less relying on bloom water and will also be uh, saving money because at the moment, I, like I've indicated, we are paying bloom water 80,000 on the current account, 80, 80 million on the current account and 20 million on the arrears. So that is too much for them for, for the municipality. But once muscle sport has been revamped, that will assist the municipality a lot. Next slide, please. Here is uh, the infrastructure that I've indicated. Here is the fleet that we have. Here is the resealing of the roads in the pictures that have been done. And here is uh, the asbestos pipe and the pipes that we are saying, if we can get uh, money because MISA has already assisted us with the master plan in relation to the underground structure. And uh, it is, it is uh, estimated that we will need about two to three billion, uh, three billion in relation to revamping the infrastructure of the whole Metro, not Bloomfontein, the whole Metro. Now, this is a picture to indicate to you uh, what is the situation and what we are doing at the moment. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, the next slide is in relation to progress made on the integrated public transport network. 10 buses were, were procured. There were 16 uh, uh, staff members um, uh, that were seconded to that particular uh, uh, unit. Uh, the challenge that we are doing, that we are having here is that um, there has been serious allegations of uh, uh, corruption, uh, theft of uh, public funds in this unit. 
the National Transport have uh, uh, appointed KPMG to look into the, uh, to, to, to conduct a forensic investigation. That is under, it's underway. There was resistance from the officials that we have seconded here. We have given them written warnings for them to cooperate with KPMG in order for this forensic investigation to be completed. We have also reconfigured IP, ITPN, that is the integrated transport system. And uh, we have made sure that uh, new people are then seconded whilst the investigations are taking place. Uh, we are also looking at bus certification to be finalized uh, uh, on the 23rd of September. Mushesha Road was not, const was not uh, 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 finalized. We have fast tracked the process and uh, as matter stands now, we have set ourselves the target of uh, the 1st of October as the finalization of the construction of this Mushesha Road so that the rapid bus system can take its course. And we have appointed on an urgent basis uh, uh, the constructor who is on site now, who's working day and night to finalize this so that when the Minister of Transport comes on the 1st of October to launch the bus uh, system, then the road uh, is, is done. We have appointed about 88 people who are on site at the moment and 20 subcontractors that were appointed who are local to assist the main contractor to finalize this Mushesha Road. Next slide, please. With regard to this also uh, going forward, it's uh, in relation to the fleet management agreement that we have entered into. Uh, we have also signed uh, the agreement with the interim depot and the bus lease contract. The Howen bus go live <clears throat> will be launched, like I've indicated by Minister Mbalula on October, 2022. So this is the project that was made in, in relation to this. This particular project, was started in 2017, and it never kickstarted uh, to extend to, 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 to the level where the municipality expected. We have fast-tracked it, and we have set ourselves the target that on the 1st of October, 2022, Minister Mbalula will be launching this uh, rapid bus system. Next slide, please. We have, uh, these are the actions that we have taken in finalizing this. Uh, with regard to us having uh, meetings with uh, the taxi associations, we have already bought uh, the permits from this uh, taxi uh, runners, uh, paid uh, uh, for one permit, 1.2 million, as it is in the national norm. And uh, we are also procuring furniture for the offices. We are looking in relation to finalizing the uh, uh, staff. And uh, we also will be having law enforcement in relation to illegal parking where these buses should be uh, making their routes and we'll make sure that uh, <clears throat> law enforcement is available to ensure that uh, this uh, Howing uh, bus service, uh, 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 integrated bus service is a success. Next slide, please. Now, with regard to, with regard to towards the end of my presentation, with regard to the uh, challenges that we found in social services, the zoo, we are resuscitating the zoo. There has been an indication of us to relocate the zoo. There is a, a council a, a agreement that this zoo should be resuscitated. We have received the budget estimates from the HOD social services in relation to uh, the revamping of the zoo. We are in agreement with this year that uh, once we have made sure that uh, the zoo has been uh, refurbished, then we'll have the animals taken back to the zoo because this was a, 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 a tourist attraction for the municipality. And now that the zoo has been closed, only 10 buffaloes are in the zoo. And we are going to make sure that that has been taken back. We have put money aside and, and also business have partners with us and have, have, have made commitment to also put resources so that we take the, the zoo back to where it is. Next slide, please. With regard to disaster management, we have the progress that we've made so far is still relating to sufficient funding uh, to enable the subdirectorate to respond to humanitarian needs. Uh, we have also made immediate replacement of backup batteries for two-way radio uh, repeaters. We have installed additional two-way repeaters. We have taken, uh, 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 we have spent 30, 300 million uh, thousand for the fire and emergency equipment that we also received from uh, Sanlam uh, this month to ensure that we have uh, proper equipment to respond to disasters uh, in the Metro. Next slide, please. 
Uh, with regard to police service, this will be my almost la last slide. Just uh, in summary, <clears throat> the Metro uh, promulgated a notice through the provincial department to establish the uh, Metro Police on the eve of the launching of uh, the uh, Metro Police. There was a political directive given to the administration that they should not proceed. By law, the city has got the metropolis. National Treasury only indicated that metropolis could continue, should uh, be established, and the Gazette implemented on condition that the funding set aside for the municipal police is not exceeded. And we are going to make sure that the metro police is revamped and that as per the directive of national treasury, the, the amount that has been set aside for the, for the police service of the Metro is not being exceeded. And the long and the short of it, these are the activities that we have undertaken to ensure that in the interim that we are going through the legalities of the establishment of the Metro police, we then do the following parking meters to be introduced, enforcement of bylaws, creation of animal and, and uh, vehicle pounds, testing uh, to be then given to the municipality from the provincial government. Uh, we will consider building weight bridge, uh, weight bridges, which are not functional yet. We'll have uh, 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 traffic conversation systems. We will have uh, handheld uh, speed cameras and there's the amount and the amounts are on the right hand side of uh, yeah, this is what we are going to be utilizing. And that was, I think, my presentation, honorable members. It has been long, but uh, it was important that we take uh, the honorable members in relation to the progress that we have made. In conclusion, I must indicate that uh, 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 the progress that we, we are, that we have made, there has been some uh, hiccups in relation to, especially the sewerage spillages in the city. We have since appointed the service provider to provide us with the uh, uh, material and uh, we have given a priority. We are meeting every Monday, every, every day for 30 to 40 minutes every day from half past seven as the EMT to look into the progress that we are making in arresting this uh, challenge of uh, sewerage spillages in the Metro and also water leaks. We have dedicated, uh, we have a dedicated team together with Bloom Water to deal with water leaks and we report on daily basis from half past seven on the problem that we are making there. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. While, while, whilst we'll move to the next uh, <clears throat> presentation, uh, I just wanted to, it, this was brought to my attention that we should uh, acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, treasury in, in the meeting and indicate who is here. Uh, I was informed Homozo Paloi, who is acting chief director, is uh, part of the meeting. Kavita Ruplal, Sifiso Mabaso, and Majaji Mashweshwe, or Mushweshwe, it depends on how this is pronounced. There might be others also who are who I might not have acknowledged who are here because maybe of how they are registered. But would like to uh, emphasize the importance of uh, treasury in all of, of this process, as was earlier indicated by the deputy minister, that the minister uh, took this to cabinet, proposed this and uh, the decision was taken. I just wanted to do that. I was not disrupting the process. Can we proceed then to the next presentation? No, good morning, uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, and, and good morning to the honorable members um, of the committee. And uh, let me also express my greetings to the, the deputy minister and the Director General, and also colleagues from the ministry who are in the meeting, and uh, also our colleagues from National Treasury, MISA, and the uh, provincial uh, departments that are in, in the meeting. Well, my presentation, 
will not be as long as that one of uh, uh, Emangau. Uh, it's partly simply because it has just, uh, uh, the intervention, the national intervention has just commenced about two, two months or so ago. Uh, but then we we will also brief you about the the, the 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 progress so far. This is the purpose of the presentation: is to provide the committee with just uh, the progress that we have made um, with regard to the intervention of uh, in terms of section one three nine seven of the constitution in, in Ogbogichima. Um, uh, honourable chairperson and also members. Um, this slide simply um, indicate what is significant with this slide is that um, you have uh, an, uh, 68 councillors in, in, the, in that constitute the, the council. And uh, uh, what is of note is that uh, uh, only 20 of them are the returning councillors and around 48 are new councillors uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the metro. Next, the next slide. I mean, in the in in Okmukichima, sorry, and um, we all know that there has been a a, a a provincial intervention that has been prevalent since 2018, and uh, and there was an FRP that was developed, uh, and and the, the 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 challenge was simply because the implementation thereof has not yielded any desired traction. You know, um, the previous council before the elections in November, did not uh, uh, actually fail to provide oversight and support required for this FRP to be implemented uh, in, in, during, that, uh, during the intervention period. And um, um, uh, these, uh, these uh, material breaches continued, you know, uh, uh, persisting in the municipality, um, uh, unabated. And uh, because of that, the, 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 it necessitated that national government has to then intervene. And uh, uh, the cabinet resolved in April to, to invoke section 1397 of the constitution. And uh, on the 13th of May, the Minister of Finance um, formally launched a national intervention program and introduced the national cabinet representative uh, in, in Ogbogijima and uh, uh, su supported by cocktail that has also assigned uh, two senior officials to join the team. You can go to the next slide. The team has been given the focus or the intervention that was supposed to be driven by the team, focused on these four deliverables. And obviously the first one is to do an assessment um, uh, of the operation finances and also the, the progress or what has been implemented and not implemented in, in, the, in that FRP uh, to ensure that they can pick up the gaps. And then the second one is to determine the best way to change the status quo, you know, from what, what it is to a sustainable uh, 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 municipality. And the third uh, objective or focus area was to uh, create an environment conducive for economic stimulation um, to, to obviously deal with uh, uh, the, the, the persistent uh, poverty and social dependence uh, in, in, in the municipality. And lastly, um, the, the team was to then develop and implement uh, the, the reviewed financial recovery plan um, if, uh, to, to ensure that the municipality is restored to its uh, 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 functionality. Next, next slide, uh, that my, my report. So the team had the following deliverables in terms of its operation uh, with Treasury because it, uh, there, there is a contract between the NCR team and, and also uh, with, with National Treasury. And uh, these are the deliverables. Uh, obviously, the first one is SC's assessment that has been done. And then uh, uh, there will be const constant uh, uh, update in terms of the new FRP and also uh, to ensure that uh, there is a uh, uh, monitoring in terms of the implementation of the new FRP and that there will be reporting to parliament as well as to treasury and, and both court and treasuries on the progress uh, uh, undertaken by the team. So far the team has, uh, has consulted all these stakeholders that you see on the last bullet and uh, uh, the, most of them have embraced the, 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 the intervention initiative by national government. 
Next slide. These are the four areas that the team had to do when they did the SS assessment, which is governance, issue capacity, financial management, and service delivery. Let's go to the next slide. The members, this is uh, uh, um, uh, the, the status of the municipality when this, uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, effort was conducted by the team. Uh, I will not go to all of them, but uh, oversight in adequacy is confirmed, issues of lack of consequence management, um, you know, um, MPEG took decisions, resolutions were not uh, implemented, there is poor record management, there is uh, the, the labor, local labor forum is not functional, and the disciplinary board has not been acting against transgressors, which was just a, 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 a free for all in, that, in this municipality. In, under institutional capacity, you have a grossly inflated salary bill, a bloated organization structure, you know, and uh, staff being paid on grade six uh, through a grade four municipality. There is a, a, a potential ghost employees and also that the uh, issues of overtime as articulated also in Mangaung's situation was is also prevalent here. And uh, uh, what is also disturbing is this allegation of unlawful suspensions and dismissals. So you, you can see that the, the, the entire staff is under siege in that municipality uh, as a result of all these governance challenges. And the financial management, you have a, a poor quality of data information, you know, uh, revenue from electricity is not ring fenced, and instead it's diverted to pay salaries, you know, and there, as a result, they can't pay even XCOM. And then um, you have an unfunded budget, uh, um, loss of revenue from change, use management, uh, and also allegations of municipal councillors and administrators defaulting on paying rates and taxes. Under service delivery, um, you've got aging infrastructure, vandalism, waste management challenges, uh, ineffective environmental management capability, as well as um, you know, the issues of lack of enforcement you know, uh, of uh, securing the, the municipal uh, infrastructure and assets uh, in, in Ogunjima. Now, the next slide, um, this is slide is to share with the honorable members, the, just the contracts periods of the current incumbencies that uh, are running, that are appointed the municipality. Uh, you can see the MM's uh, uh, contracts coming and in 20, 1920, I mean, 2023, 2026 for the CFO, community services, 2024, technical services, 2026, and then COO, 2024. And we all know that uh, the law says uh, the contracts were supposed to not to go beyond uh, a year after the elections. Uh, but some of these things we still uh, uh, um, uh, establishing from the department uh, why some of these things has not been complied with. But we also know that there is a new uh, amended act. I mean, uh, um, uh, in terms of the Systems Act, uh, that is also in, in place now. Let's go to the next uh, slide. We are reporting in uh, the next two slides, just report to the members the uh, progress made by, by the team uh, as a collective in, in, in Okmukijima. Um, the report was completed and, uh, and it has been submitted to council on the 11th of August. The FRP is at 90% uh, complete and uh, there is an interim FRP that the team is implementing. Uh, and then the the the, the directives issued by the NCR team to the municipal manager, most of the time when since the team has arrived has, has been met with resistance, which was initially subtle, but then of late it was quite uh, uh, clearing. And it has come out in the open that the uh, management is not prepared to cooperate with the NCR team as, as, as deployed in the municipality. The team is again, is having, is enjoying a lot of support from the council and uh, also um, uh, there the are already a measure that has been in, in introduced by the team in terms of internal, internal controls to, to begin to nip some of these uh, reckless uh, uh, um, you know, operations in the municipality in the bad. Yeah, some ghost employees have been, have been uh, 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 detected and have been taken off the roll, um, uh, uh, but obviously the work is still continuing. 
to be done. Let's go to the next slide. Yes, um, as uh, we have indicated, the directives issued by Mr. Tom, or Dr. Tom to the MM uh, is, is never uh, agreed upon or not, they never complied or disregarded. Um, uh, there has been consultation with all the stakeholders in the, in, in the, in the municipality. Um, uh, you know, the, you know, the, then given the lack of cooperation from the municipal manager and his team and her team, um, the FRP, I mean, the NCR then requested the treasury to give them a, a capacity to reconstruct, you know, records of this particular municipality uh, um, uh, uh, per se. And, and, and National Treasury has already assigned and appointed people uh, of that has been uh, assigned to assist the, the team to do the reconstruction of this uh, uh, document records of, of the municipality. Next slide. Um, next slide. Maybe the, the presentation is, does not want to move. I suppose I can use mine here. Yeah, the next one is um, uh, oh yes, the the answer has been defied and offered no assistance in accessing the data by the accounting officer, and uh, um, obviously this uh, uh, challenge hindered the, the team to gain better insights of the financial uh, failures and, and governance failures uh, so that they can be able to design the relevant solution. And, uh, this, uh, you know, members, despite the, the intervention of the executive mayor, uh, the top management has refused to allow the, the team to access all the municipal owned devices so that they can be able to do the reconstruction of the required information. Um, and, 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 the, the denial of access to these uh, uh, records is, is, is really uh, impacting on, on, on the NCR to be able to can understand the, 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 all the, the, the matters or all the expenditures that have happened in, in the municipality um, uh, up to now. Let's go to the next slide. This one I will not go just to share with you what the cocktail has assisted. They've been work, uh, working the journey with the team. They are, they are a collective there, uh, assisting uh, Dr. Tom, Tom uh, to to uh, implement all the all the his, his uh, assignments in the in the municipality. You can go to the next one. This is the last slide, uh, members. It's just to uh, conclude in terms of giving, sharing with the, the, the members our observations, you know, uh, in terms of what is prevalent in the municipality. Uh, we, there's no doubt that there is, the council is, is, is behind the team and this national intervention. The problem is there is exogenous political interference in the operations of the municipality. Um, and as we have reported, the defiance of the MM to to to, uh, to 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 cooperate has also impacted. And what was interesting is that when the MM is on leave and there's the CFO is an acting MM, he also uh, does not comply. You know, so you can see that the whole management is a block that is uh, uh, really uh, resisting this particular uh, intervention. To ensure that the, the, the municipality is uh, is is, uh, is gravitated to a functional state. Yeah, the, the we are optimistic that the the organizational des redesign process will stabilize the staff costs once the process is uh, completed. Um, and you know there is a number a, a significant number of employees in the municipality that are desperate for change and are sick and tired of this uh, paralysis that is prevalent in the municipality uh, and really are yearning for the stability to be restored. Yeah, and, and that we all are committed to deal with this maleficent uh, uh, despite the pushback uh, from management. And um, 
uh, the support is, you know, is required by all to implement this new FRP. And we are very uh, confident that we, it will lead to the uh, service delivery gains uh, in the municipality. Just to indicate that um, um, uh, at the political level, the Minister of, of Finance is seized with the, with the political challenges in the municipality. Uh, he, has, he has been also in, in the municipality, I think, during the course of this week to, to engage. And we, we, we are hopeful that uh, this impasse will also be addressed. And then we should be having the council to take the necessary decisions and so that uh, the team can then operate if, effectively in the, in the municipality. I will pause here, uh, 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 Chairperson. This is our submission. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I think I will open up now uh, to members. Uh, at this point, it's for discussion. I see the hand of Honorable Brink. Um, I see the hand of uh, Honorable uh, uh, Space, Honorable Kalipi, Honorable Direko, and Honorable Teza, uh, Honorable Adebe, uh, and Honorable Booms. I'll try and uh, I think assist me to know what is the order. I, I suspect all the members want to speak. Can we start with Honorable Brink? Thanks very much, Chairperson. Please allow me to keep my camera off because of uh, bandwidth. Uh, my okay. first set of, thank you, Chair. Uh, my first set of questions relates to uh, Mangaung. What concerned me about the presentation is that it makes no mention of the financial recovery plan. And yet, under section 139 sub 7, read with the relevant sections of the MFMA, the financial recovery plan is the rudder that steers the national government intervention. It is in the financial recovery plan that you make very specific uh, interventions or you cite very specific interventions that then binds the municipality, the political leadership, uh, as well as the administration. Uh, and so my question is whether such a financial recovery plan has been formulated, whether it has been shared with the municipal council, and whether all of the other requirem requirements in respect of such a financial recovery plan have in fact been met. Secondly, um, I hear the concern about motions of no confidence, the political instability um, that might arise if, say, the mayor is removed, such as uh, happened with the chief whip. My question to that would be, have, has the intervention team made a concerted effort to keep the council, including the opposition parties, informed? of their progress. Uh, and I suppose this goes back to the question about a financial recovery plan uh, and whether sufficient efforts are made to speak to those opposition councillors, given the fact that this isn't a municipality with a government that has got a clear uh, majority. I think there's also a coalition in place there. Uh, and so to get that type of political stability, it's not like the old days where there was one party with a super majority and you only need to be worried about the councillors of that party. What efforts are being made uh, in order to uh, inculcate a sense of shared responsibility for the success of this financial recovery plan, if indeed one is in place? Uh, then I just want to know whether there is any indication in Mangahung that, um, that there is sabotage of the efforts of the uh, intervention team? Is it just the motions of no confidence that are concerned to the intervention team? Uh, or are there, is there resistance from other political players, say, for example, the speaker or any of the senior managers in the administration? Uh, then, Chair, I just want to know whether the 
the head of supply chain management, the head of revenue management, and the head of human resources have been replaced, or whether those persons are the same as before. There's an indication that the revenue collection rate is 74.3%. Uh, can they just please indicate whether this is a current collection rate? In other words, is that the collection rate on debt uh, that is not older than 30 days, or is that a, a collection rate that includes arrear payments? In other words, 30 days and, plus, uh, and, and over. And I think they will understand the significance of this because if they're not collecting current debt, they are still in trouble. Then Chair, it is astounding. It is absolutely astounding that 1.3 billion Rand is owed to Mangahong by provincial and national government departments and organs of state. I mean, if this money is really owed and if it can be paid within the next six months, that is the turnaround that Mangahong potentially needs in combination with, with other interventions. Uh, reference was made to a successful meeting with the province where agreement to pay, I don't know, tens of millions was secured, but that's not successful. Successful would be agreement to pay this entire 1.3 billion. Um, and I would really, if I were part of the intervention team, I would just be focus and make sure that that uh, government departments aren't given a free pass when, when water and electricity is cut off. That presumes, of course, that those bills aren't in dispute. Then lastly, a uh, chairperson mentioned was a shift system to replace or to uh, remedy the situation of excessive overtime. Um, but, you know, logic tells me to put shifts in place, you need to hire more people. So, yes, you save on overtime, and that's good, and the overtime becomes excessive. And I, I'm aware that people get addicted to overtime. They change their lifestyles based on what they can earn on overtime. But in order to get a shift system in place, you need to recruit more people. And is that realistic? Then on the second uh, presentation, Chairperson, it is very concerning, very, very concerning that the accounting officer seems to be uh, actively undermining and opposing the intervention team. Now here we did have reference to a financial recovery plan being in place, that's good, as opposed to mangong, when, where the word was, the phrase was never even uttered in the presentation. Uh, but can we please have a confirmation whether the council has seen that financial recovery plan and where the active efforts are being made to reach out to all political parties and councillors and council to support the intervention plan. Then just curious, I mean, if the, if the municipal manager and the senior managers are stonewalling um, Treasury and Cogta there, surely the, the financial recovery plan should come to your uh, assistance. Because if you read the detailed provisions in the MFMA of what can be done with a recovery plan and how it binds council, you can uh, pretty much take effective and quick disciplinary action against these stonewalling officials. Because their conduct, if, if your account is true, is clear out and out misconduct. Uh, and they should be removed from their positions as soon as possible. And, and of course, I am. I am taking the word of, of what is being presented uh, to us. Uh, and I, I suppose connected to that is reference at the end of the presentation to, to external political interference. Um, does that refer to the officialdom again? Does that refer to sort of cadres in the factions in the administration? Or who are these outsiders who are, who are undermining the intervention? Just a clear indication of that. Thanks very much, Chair. Speaker, uh, Honourable Space. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, colleagues, and good morning to all the presenters. Chair, um, luckily, um, Honourable Balank, and we haven't discussed this, has covered me on about four of my issues. And so I will just um, highlight three issues. I just want to first say thank you, Chair, to I think what is quite exceptional support that the departments are giving to 
these municipalities. One must must acknowledge that. And and for me, the conclusion that I'm making, the summary that I make is that the problem actually does not lie with them, but it lies within the municipality. And just like we've said yesterday, some of us um, members, we can see what is the problem and where it lies. And I'm 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 just by by the presenter using the word exogenous political interference to me already rings uh, you know a, um, a bell or not a, it's a red light that goes on hugely to me and so the three things that I really wanted to touch on sir it was the outstanding debt and honorable Brink has mentioned that by government departments just making the calculations that can immediately be um, some burden being lifted then the great six salary costs but it's a great four municipality which is totally totally unethical it's illegal and must be acted on and then the unfunded budget for me was 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 also a red light i want to say that surely what is the next step when i heard that the gentleman said that top management do not want to allow national treasury to have access to municipal owned devices. I was asking myself, how on earth is this possible? And so my question is, um, what is the next step that they are going to follow? Because this must be dealt with immediately. And once again, Chair, just to conclude, the political interference and the leadership um, instability and incapacity and inaction really needs to be taken up by the political leaders of the governing party of that municipality. Because the, at the core of the problem is exactly that. Because all these departments can come in and intervene. But if they are not getting the cooperation and collaboration of the political leadership, we are gonna get nowhere with this. And as I said yesterday, we will sit here for hours on hours and days on days and months and years and we will get nowhere and we will be wasting our time because the core of the problem, root of the problem is not being addressed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Mukhalib. Uh, Honorable Mukhalib. Chairperson, hello. Yeah, yeah okay. sorry. Um, no, I was greeting you, Chair, and uh, uh, the DM who is leading the delegation and everyone who is here in the meeting. Chair, let me start engaging with uh, Inok Unkijima. Uh, it seems as if um, the intervention will fail uh, because the presentation that has been presented here suggests that even people who support, who are supposed to cooperate, they are very negative. But I agree with Honorable Spice to say that, you see, the department, when they sent this intervention, they only concentrate on some issues which relate to governance and some of the issues. But the root of the, of the problem is political. And I'm happy because in the presentation of Mangawong is mentioned there. But since I'm speaking about uh, Inokim Kijima, maybe uh, the President Ampo must just tell us, is this intervention is working or is not working? For instance, my problem start by, whereby we are told that there is an MM in this municipality, but the very same MM, when the intervention took place was there and there's no consequences on the MM as an accounting officer. That is my first problem. Maybe we're going to be clarified by the DM. Secondly, if you see on the outcomes, I think it's slide number eight of the presentation of Inokim Kijima, the outcomes of, of the assessment. It seems as if everything is not working, inadequate oversight and or consequence management by both political and, and administrative governance structures inadequate public participation and stakeholders, MPEG resolutions not acted upon or implemented, poor records management, lack of disaster, everything is, is a problematic to this municipality. Then my question is, 
is this intervention going to help this municipality or not? So what needs to be done politically? Because our real problem is factions, is political, and it needs to start there if we want to address some of the issues. Disciplinary board not acting against transgressors, you know, it spells the problem in this municipality. So Umpo must come back and tell us, what, is he wasting his time with the team that is sent by the covenants as an intervention, or he does he see any progress? And if he does any, he see any progress, what is the time frame? Coming to Mangawong Chen. In Mangawong, uh, DDG, when you arrive there, uh, you also mentioned on your presentation, I guess, to say that the first thing on your background, um, I just, I want to uh, uh, decrease over time. I'm just enter, uh, opening the, the presentation. Forgive me, Chairperson. When we arrived the uh, uh, DDG, um, Tashuping, the first thing that also come at your doorstep was the cause of, you are mentioning the causes of instability. Wuti Mangawong Metro is characterized by element of lack and poor oversight and governance system, political instability, factionalism in municipal council. So therefore, when I was listening to your presentation, some of the things that you are mentioning here is cause of instability, we are addressing them. For instance, hiring of MM and all other senior managers. So my, my questions to you, uh, is it going to address the cause of instability? I think one of uh, these days, I think last week, the shop steward was killed. And if you can also share with the committee, Wuti, what is your understanding? I know you are not a policeman, but if you are dealing with an instability and factionalism, and in Mangawong, before the intervention take place, we also see, or we also saw some disturbing videos that was happening inside Mangawong, whereby one faction, AI Jaha, any affection inside the council. So please, it seems as if we are getting the uh, 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 acting MM of uh, Mangaung, but please update us in terms of when you arrive, how's the situation through the intervention that you have also uh, implemented. But again, I wanted to understand as Honorable Brink was saying that the money that is owed uh, to the municipality by the provincial governments and other people can help you. And you are saying to your presentation as well, uh, the LG CETA, you are looking for funding to them. So the question is that why are you not insisting on those people who are owing you instead of you going and, and look for money somewhere else? The issue of uh, ghost workers of political office bearer, I think it was one of the headaches that was also engulfing Manga when you arrived the DDG. So I heard you saying that you have uh, put some measures in place in terms of uh, resolving those issues. So please also take us through if you have won, because was, that was one of the difficulties when we read about it. And then can you also clarify this uh, issue of a uh, uh, reduction? of committees or departments from nine to seven. And you are even saying to your presentation, uh, the LLF also agreed on it. So what will be, what impact will have in terms of reduction? Is anyone from the council going to uh, not share a committee uh, or how does it affect the whole thing? Because if the LLF agreed with you, it means they don't have a problem because is a labor is a local labor forum which are representing workers there. Uh, on your slides number eleven, the status quo, lack, misplaced, poor commitment with administration. Are we getting there? Have you also managed to deal with it? Because when you are saying that uh, we have advertised the position of EMM, and it means that you soon going to be gone from this municipality. Uh, so are you also uh, satisfied that no, I've done my part as an interventionist from national. So now there's an MM who's going to take the pattern forward. I, I don't know. I don't even understand how does uh, uh, this unspend? I think the MM who is the DDG spoke about it. The unspend of conditional grants 
including USDG uh, and what, what, what neighbor something. I mean, I was there in Mangawong recently and there is a lack of service delivery. I know your first priority, DDG, is to get the governance or the administration to be on par. But if it does not translate to the service delivery of the people on the ground, it will also not going to Ogawel with the people of Mangawong. So maybe just also take us through, because I know that the government, the provincial government supposed to oversee this uh, conditional grants and then tell us the really, really pro problem, uh, challenges, why there's this unspent conditional grants while the people, they need it on the ground. And then um, you spoke about the board. I think you also mentioned, I'm not sure, but you'll confirm DDG, this issue of uh, uh, Centlec, uh, you said that no, they must be disbanded now. So tell us uh, what is the plan? Because I think that at some point, the Centlec item was supposed to have been discussed in the council sitting and the mayor, the current mayor withdrew it from the agenda. Maybe what was the reason? Because it's also su surfacing here on your presentation. You are mentioning very well that the board is not working and what is the status, but why it was withdrawn from the agenda of the council. And uh, the there was a report of FESI consultants, which implicates former mayor O Limlalil. When will it serve in the council MM? Or you live like that, uh, not taking through this uh, report to, to, to the council. And then as much as other committees, you mentioned that they are functional and they have some challenges, but they are not uh, that big challenges according to your presentation here. But why section 80 committee of infrastructure never set to date while there's a backlog regarding storage? And I heard you saying that uh, uh, if you go to Mangawong now, the town is very clean. So to me, I will take it as if it's the starting point. The town is clean, is good. All towns must be clean. We must breathe fresh air when we go to towns. But if the townships is not clean, what is the plan, MM, before you leave Mangawong? You also mentioned that uh, you have discovered that lawyers are charging you so uh, uh, money, so big money. So Matlo Attorney's report, council held it on the 12th May 2022 regarding ghost workers. And it was recommended that three officials be charged for misconduct, including the HOD for corporate who has since resigned even before the report was tabled. How far with that a report of that HOD who resigned from corporate service? But yeah, I think you said also the lawyers are taking chances because they see that Kukampon's uh, element here. And my last question, Chair, is the purchase of land for graveyard at Nelly's View Farm on the on the N6 route. Why is the land not utilized since uh, the graveyards there are full and people are buried on top of each other? So those are the issues that I just want to hear from uh, the acting MM, who is the DTG in the in the in the in the put in the in the cocktail. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Director. Uh, greetings to the chair, members of the committee and also the, the delegation from the department under the leadership of the DM Academy. Chair, I've listened to the presentation and when you look at the Mangawum presentation, it shows that there are some positive uh, effects on the side of the administration side. And however, we have some political challenges in that municipality. So Chair, my questions are on HR. I want to check with uh, the DDG as to how far is the municipality in terms of the placement of the former municipal uh, municipal staff of Nalid and Sudpan because they were then sent to Mangawung after the am amalgamation, but not so long ago during the imbizo of the president in Mangawung, an issue of those employees was raised as to say they've never been integrated to the organogram of the municipality. And secondly, how is the working conditions of the employees in 
in the municipality because we've been seeing some of the protests in the municipality where they were raising issue of the PPEs, allegations of the inconsistency on the employee salaries. They, they were alleged that some of the general workers are not receiving the same salaries in the municipality. The third one, Chair, I want to check if they have a, a, a placement policy and adopted a realistic organogram for the municipality because I've heard that the DDG was speaking about the, the shifting system. Has the municipality been able to, to, to come up with a clear organogram that will also cater for that uh, shifting uh, system that they have? Because I believe that the, the, the shifting system is very good because it's going to cut the outsourcing and save the uh, money for the municipality. And on savings delivery, uh, Chair, we, we have water crisis currently in Mangawi, especially on Riverside and Pahame. So I want to check if, is there any plan for municipality to address those challenges of uh, water in those areas? And uh, secondly, Chair, we still have areas that are still using bucket systems. So is there any plan on the side of municipality to remove those bucket systems? Because it can be that after this very long time, we still have people who are still using the bucket system. And the other one, Chair, there's, a, there's been some social media uh, videos which have been making rounds mostly on social media. And it was about some of the roads in Mangawu, and especially the one of the graveyard to Butabelo, in Butabelo, that route where people were raising concern. I just want to check if is it in their plan to fix that road or not. And I've also heard the DTG speaking about um, appointment of the city manager. So I want an honest opinion from the department. With the current state of Mangawu, do we really need to appoint a city manager or do we really need to allow the intervention team to stabilize municipality? And after the municipality is stabilized, then we can consider the appointment of the city manager. Because we, we, we've seen that in most municipalities where you have the city manager and the administrator, they don't work together in ensuring that they, they meet their objective. You'll find the city manager pulling this direction the administrator pulling in this direction. At least in Machabi, in, Ma, in, Ma, in Mangawu, we have advantage of the administrator in the absence of the city manager, and we can see that there's a progress. So do we really need to appoint a, a city manager? And uh, lastly, Chair, is on Inok Mkijimi. I want to check with the department that mostly on these uh, municipalities that are not performing well, the Auditor General will always say some of the challenges is lack of uh, political oversight in those municipalities. So I want to check that in Inok Mukitim, is there any political will, willingness to assist the municipality? Are they having a financial recovery plan in place? If so, is it implemented? And if it's implemented, how is the progress? Thank you, Chair. The next speaker is Honorable Teza. No, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, my, my issues have been covered by honorable members and uh, honorable Kalipi. Uh, I'm left with a very few issues, Chair. Uh, there is a material impairment, impairment uh, to the tune of 4,183,000. There's unauthorized expenditure of uh, 1 billion, there is a uh, irregular expenditure of 1 billion 600. There is underspending of conditional grants. Uh, um, um, the municipality has underspent the urban settlement development uh, grant uh, and uh, public transport infrastructure grant, uh, both on uh, 210. 33 million and uh, 103 million. And uh, material losses uh, 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 on material losses on uh, consolidated financial statements, uh, material water distribution losses on 227, and uh, and so on, Chair. And then on service delivery there, Chair, uh, you've got a 
a a a a, a project uh, of the Department of Transport, uh, Integrated Transport Network in the Metropolitan Municipality. Uh, it is said there that the municipality has developed and approved an operational plan of, uh, for for the phase of the integrated uh, public transport <clears throat> network that uh, covers the period of 2016 to 2020. Uh, I just want to ask uh, that period, why was, why was it not met? And uh, how much was, was planned in terms of uh, feasibility studies, initial stages of the construction process of the program? And then uh, if you go to Mushueshwe track, track route, uh, it commenced in twenty in in, in twenty uh, on the twenty first of January, uh, uh, twenty nineteen, which was set was planned to have been completed on the fourteenth of November twenty nineteen, uh, as part of 20, 2021, February twenty twenty when the project was not yet completed. Why was it not met? What are the impediments on, on, on these targets that are not met? Because it looks like uh, uh, even projects in terms of intervention, they are not, they are, they are not met on, 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 on projects thing. I just want to, to, to get a sense of that because at the bottom end of the, of, of, of the chain is the end user and the end user being deprived of, the, of services. Um, On, on, on one billion, I will pass there because both uh, uh, Honorable Mukalib and, and Honorable Kring covered that very well. So I won't do that again. Um, on, even on corporate, on slide 10, cooperative, corporate services, the vacancies there. And, and then I'll go on slide six, Chair. The, 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 the economic, they spoke of the economic stimulation. I just want to check what is the nature of that economic stimulation because our worry is that uh, 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 in the process of 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 improving uh, municipalities, you must build a, a economic activities which will give rise to employment and uh, people able because there's a lot of indigent uh, list in municipalities, so this could solve. Uh, what has become uh, uh, engraved uh, in, 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 municipal, in municipal population. Um, and then, so I just want to know the nature. And then uh, they spoke of, uh, okay, I'll pass there because it was covered. And the cleaning up, uh, I want to go on landfill site chair. Uh, I, I want to get an understanding uh, from, from Honorable Mshashupi. Uh, if you are removing people from a, an already deplorable site uh, where they reside, uh, do you consider there are economic activities there? And do you consider uh, moving them together with their economic activities uh, instead of because every time we're dealing with 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 uh, with, 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 with people we're dealing it from the point of view of punity of being punitive you know instead of providing with uh, with with necessary uh, 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 formidable solutions to 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 to, to give the people the land, uh, to give the people the land and and to for 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 residential purposes there, and the the reason why people are are, are living there is it is because of uh, there is no the, the, those those sites will, will not be located in, in, in white suburb, former white suburban areas and so forth. You won't find, you find them coming to dump in, in next to, 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 to the townships there. So I, I, I just want to check uh, whether 
they they've they've considered a different approach uh, in dealing with uh, 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 res residents there instead of pointing figures to who is not from here in South Africa and who is from here uh, because that will present with a lot of problems of xenophobia and other issues so uh, let them tell us what what would be other means to to curtail the situation synergy between contracts uh, management supply and and use that will not happen because by design that particular uh, uh, pro, uh, um, chain uh, does not seek to to have synergy because of its corruptibility chair and then uh, that would be my issues uh, chair for now thank you thank you honorable bumza It's hard to have a chair after. Oh, then come in. I, I, no, Honorable Mpumza, wait. Uh, I indicated my uh, challenge of listing. Uh, Honorable Adebe. Thank you so much, um, Honorable Chairperson. Um, let me take this opportunity to greet the Deputy Minister as the leader of the delegation, DDG, um, all other officials and, and colleagues. Um, allow me to welcome uh, the progressive report and presentation of Mangawung as it relates to section 139, subsection 7, which is a national intervention. Honorable Chair, I do not normally applaud the fish for swimming. However, Chair, it is also my conviction that when we have desire and commitment to see things being done correctly and in line with good corporate governance, um, one also has to be comfortable and satisfied when progress is made to, towards achieving such. As such, we are also called upon to apply the same a desire and commitment to give credit when credit is due. I'm raising this chair precisely because of the report that we've just received of Manga Wong. As I was listening to, to the report, Chair, I got hope and comfort that indeed things are being done in, 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 in that municipality and the situation will soon uh, 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 approve. Uh, the presentation highlighted all the challenges issues of uh, sewer spillage, um, issues that relates to metropolis uh, re-establishment, potholes, road resurfacing, especially issues of uh, water, the 80 million of uh, bloom water and 20 million of interest. The report highlighted and did not hide anything. And as the DDG was uh, presenting, I was reminded of Amilka Cabral, when he said, hide nothing away from the masses of our people, tell no lies, expose lies, whenever they are told, mask not difficulties, mistakes and failure. Thank you so much. However, to align myself with, um, I think it's honorable bring on issues pertaining to money owed by government departments to Mangawum, we should not adopt a soft approach when dealing with this. I urge the intervention team to be very decisive in dealing with this matter and demand that money ought to be paid as soon as yesterday. If it means disconnecting of services, so it be, so be it. We must send a very clear and unequivocal message when we deal with government departments. The second issue that I would like to also touch on is the political instability and to caution that we should not expect an um, administrative solution to deal with our political uh, uh, challenges in that municipality. As such, the deputy minister will be a relevant person to give us sense and comfort on what is it that they are doing in, in addressing once and for all issues of political instability and political interference in that um, municipality. 
Because like I said, we cannot expect administrative solution to political problems. Um, in aligning myself with Honorable Mkalipi and Honorable Direko, I'd like to start by quoting that famous quote to say, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting di uh, different results. History and experience has taught us, Chair, that the premature departure of intervention leads to the collapse of the good work and progress uh, that would have done at that particular point. As such, I would like to get a sense and understanding to the DDG. What are the measures in place to ensure that you have long-term sustainable solution to the good work that you have done? Do you have plan and measures in place? Are they smart? Uh, uh, by smart, I mean specific, measurable, uh, and will they uh, achieve a sustainable solution when you leave? I'm mindful of this that you need not also to overstay your welcome and end up being captured. But our interest first and foremost is to ensure that what you have done is just the beginning, but our ultimate prize is to have sustainable solution in dealing with the issues affecting the municipalities that are under intervention. Thank you so much, um, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Mbomza. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, good morning uh, to DM and uh, Enderich and the uh, Honorable Members. Chairperson, uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, let's uh, welcome the, the report uh, presented by the Department on behalf of uh, on the progress around the intervention in Mangaungu and uh, in Okumkejima. Chair, the, in, in Okumkejima, the, the, we, we, the, perhaps this, this particular report is uh, showing some indication of a positive, uh, positive action in trying to rescue Mangaung from the quagmire it is in, politically and administratively. But I would like, and uh, I think that uh, whilst the TTG was presenting and listening, I went back and Googled his profile. And uh, I realized that uh, DM, you have, uh, 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 actually sent a team that is led by a former municipal manager of Matosana. Uh, maybe if we send a team with a team led by people who had an experience in the local government, uh, perhaps uh, I was asking myself, is it because of that? Um, to the DTG, is indicating that they have decided to scale down the macro structure uh, from nine to seven. Was this a decision to scale down the macro structure from nine to seven departments uh, intended perhaps towards a uh, a process of uh, scaling down the polluted structure and at the same time, were these two departments not critically relevant at this particular time? That would be my first question, Chair. Chair, the second is that uh, one of the dominant determinants for the imposition of uh, this particular intervention, wherein financial recovery plan is at the foreground, 
was arising as a result of uh, that these municipalities had been financially distressed and their financial management and other system had collapsed. And then therefore, they were really in a distress. Now, can we be informed whether these financial recovery plans, wherever they had been imposed, they had been successful? I'm raising this question in the fact that the imposition of uh, this intervention under a financial recovery plan without a cash injection has not yielded results, in particular, the case of Mkichima. Mkichima is the second time that we are imposing this kind of intervention by national now after it had failed the imposition by the provincial executive through the financial recovery plan. What plan then, therefore, has National Treasury had in place around this issue of addressing uh, this and actually kickstarting this financial recovery plan by some form of a cash injection? That's my first question, Michelle. The second chair is that uh, looking at uh, the situation in Imkijima is really a worrying uh, factor that uh, the municipality's governance system has collapsed to the extent that we are told that uh, there is a serious exogenous interference into the administration of the municipality. And uh, the kind of uh, the MM that we're having was not cooperating at the CFO. In view of the fact that now the national team has to look for the other ways of ensuring that they extract data from the municipality because of the non-cooperation of the MM, and the CFO, yet we are told that uh, the mayor is uh, supporting and intervention on our behalf. Is it really, really that uh, the oversight structure in the municipality actually assisting this intervention team? What uh, other remedial measures? is the mayor bringing into the fore to assist this team to ensure that the administration of Inokumkijima is actually cooperating with the national team to rescue the situation in which the municipality is in. Hey, thanks, Chairperson. Honorable Matumba. No, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I would like to go to uh, Inok, to start with Inok Mkijim. Uh, Chair, I see the political interference. Uh, Chair, if there is one thing that we are always speaking about here to say, if there is no will by politicians to lead this municipality properly, that's where we are going to have a serious challenge. So even, even if the provincial government come and intervene, politicians will come back and mess up everything again because uh, Without proper political oversight, there will never be proper management. Because politicians are the ones that start all this mess 
on the management side. That's why you, you get to have CFOs and municipal managers who think they are bigger than everyone. It is starting with the kind of relationship they have with politician, politicians. It is that relationships, relationship that develop uh, that arrogance in them. Uh, so that's one thing we, we need to deal with. And it's something that in every report that come, we always raise the same thing, that there is no political accountability. It's always accountability is always on management side, but when it comes to political side, there's no accountability. Chair, let me give you an example. In all the issues that we are to deal with, it's either they are raised by a whistleblower, <laughs> SIU, NPA, SAPS, uh, or Auditor General. We, we don't have issues that we say, this is the result of MPEC that was doing a, a, an oversight or a, a section 79 oversight committees and is the one that picked up this issue. All these issues at all times are picked up by structures outside the municipality to show that but there is nothing that politicians are doing. Even in Mahangau, if ever there is no political willingness, this intervention team can do whatever it does, but politicians are going to come and mess up everything. My only question, to, because most of the things were raised by, uh, mem by members here, yeah, my question is on Mangaung. When uh, Minister Nkosa Zanasha Minisuma came to parliament to answer a question, she said Mangaung can save more than 10 million if they are to outsource, uh, to insource uh, security services. So the question is, how far is the municipality in terms of insourcing uh, security guards? Because it can save them more than 10 million, which can go to address a service delivery issue. So how far are they? And what are the timelines of insourcing security uh, services in Malawi? Thanks. Honorable uh, Butelezi. Thank you, Chair. Uh, most of the issues that I would have loved to touch on have already been covered by the colleagues. Um, however, on Manga Wung, um, I would just like to find out um, uh, if they could provide and update us on the progress of the partnership that they had with MTN, Interstate, CUT, and uh, Anchor of Hope. Um, and what does the Metro, what did the Metro hope to achieve through these partnerships? Um, and what stakeholder engagements have they undertaken to mitigate potential taxi or bus violence in the integrated public transport network? Um, under Inokum um only left with one, um, uh, according to uh, Section 139 of the Constitution, there is no need for the total collapse of a municipality before an intervention. Uh, Non-fulfillment non with respect uh, to single ident to sorry, a non-fulfillment with respect to a single identifiable obligation is sufficient for intervention. So I would like to ask why the EMLM was, you know, allowed to degenerate to the state that it degenerated to. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Honorable DM and uh, the team, uh, you will structure how you want to respond to the issues. Over to you. Um, sorry, Chairperson, I was just informed by the Deputy Minister's 
um, stuff that she's encountering some network challenges. So she is not on the platform at the moment. And the DJ. Um, I just want somebody who is going to guide uh, how we respond to this and lead that process. Sorry, Chapezi. Sorry, Chapezi. Yes. Um, yes, sorry for interjection, uh, Chapezin, respectfully. Um, you know what is happening now uh, due to this load shedding is an indicator that we should meet physically because we're not going to get uh, the desired answers or we are not going to get uh, how the, the DM would have would have desired to, 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 to give answers to the portfolio committee. Uh, it's going to impede us from- well, let's, let's, from let's note that uh, wish, uh, Honorable Professor, and number oh, please, two, uh, let's, hope the, let's hope the DM will ultimately come back. But I think we note the issue about physical, uh, but I want us to start uh, uh, responding. But I think we are noting it for the committee. Can we allow the DG to lead the team? Oh, thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, and to the members for all the questions that have been posed. I think the way I'd like to do it this time around uh, is to then get the presenters to start with responses, and I can also then possibly fill in uh, thereafter on, on some of the, the issues that have indeed been raised. So I want to hand over to Mr. Mutla Shipping as a start, um, and then we will go to um, four, and then I will come in thereafter, depending on what could be left to be responded to. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Mr. Mutla Shipping. Thank you, uh, DG, and thank you, Chairperson and honorable members. Uh, I think as a starter, I must uh, indicate that uh, the team uh, started in the municipality in, in the Metro Mangaung uh, in April, end of April, 2022. So roughly the team has been around the Metro for approximately four months. And uh, some of the issues that occurred prior to our deployment uh, in the metro, uh, I might not be in a position to intensively address, uh, address them. I must also indicate as a precursor that uh, the DG is aware of uh, the difficult environment in which the team is operating, uh, that uh, we are under the team is under 24 hours police surveillance and protection because of some of the actions that we are taking. Uh, uh, our lives are in danger. And I think that also is applicable to other interventions that national and provincial government has made because people resist uh, uh, intervention. They resist to be assisted. They resist when certain things and decisions are taken uh, uh, to, 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 to better and also to improve and to cap some of the malfeasance that, that, that have been co uh, committed in those areas. So those are the very, very difficult conditions. There has been some sort of pushback just to answer some of the issues that have been raised by honorable uh, uh, members and resistance from within, especially with regard to employees uh, for the decisions that we have taken. Fortunately, uh, the deputy minister and uh, my uh, DG has experienced some of uh, the actions that uh, took place in their presence uh, in Mangaung, where uh, uh, employees, because they wanted to force us to pay them over time, that was in excess of even 100 to 120 hours per month whereas the law provides for at least a maximum of uh, 40 hours per month. 
and uh, the DG and uh, the, 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 the deputy minister has experienced uh, the onslaught physical threats, then the team is subjected to on, uh, on frequent basis. But let me go to the issues. I, was just, I just wanted to inform uh, honorable members that uh, uh, we do not enjoy staying around uh, because of the volatile situation. That is why recently, last week, uh, the shop steward was, uh, was killed, shot at eight bullets, and uh, the police are still investigating, and I don't want to put speculations as in relation to what might have caused uh, the death of the shop steward. He was buried last week, last weekend, this uh, past weekend. Uh, going back, I think uh, the colleagues uh, from the National uh, Cabinet representative and also from National Treasury uh, will agree with me that uh, they may have to respond to this, but on the financial recovery plan. But there is a recovery plan that was developed by the provincial intervention team that we are now implementing. National Treasury is in the process now, and I know for a fact that uh, they are now reviewing this financial recovery plan. And as soon as it is finalized, the NCR shall be putting this before council for adoption and for implementation purpose. But at the moment, we are implementing the, inter the, the financial recovery plan that we found here. But the, maybe the National Treasury will put more light into how far is the process in relation to the review of this financial recovery plan. And uh, this plan that we are implementing, indeed, yes, it was submitted to council. That is why uh, it, we, we, it is implemented. We are implementing it now. Most of the actions that we are taking are also as a result of a response to that financial recovery plan. We are informing uh, Councillor Brink, councillors of the progress that we are making. We made a presentation to MPEC in response to what was highlighted by the AG and the progress report and the presentation was made by myself to MPEC and it was well received. In our last council meeting, a normal council meeting, I presented on the progress made and political parties, all political parties, then accepted the report from the municipal manager on the progress made. So on a quarterly basis, uh, during council meeting, there's a standing item on the report of the municipal manager. That's where we report. And apart from that, we've got what we call a multi-party whippery, where we report uh, on, on the progress that we are making. So parties are informed. And uh, we have also uh, have an open door policy, uh, my office with regard to all political parties. My phone, is full of messages and also queries that all political parties, especially uh, councillors, will then be engaging with myself, especially in relation to some queries and some other uh, reports that they will request from time to time. And uh, even during my presentation today, uh, that uh, disturbing phone was as a result of councillors calling me. The issue of sabotage of the intervention like I said, it has been, there has been pushback from the side of um, uh, employees because of the decisions that we are taking. And they see us as invading into the space and uh, denying them uh, the opportunity of making more money. Uh, the issue again was in relation to the strict control measures that we put in place uh, to ensure that uh, we do not rely on service providers because we were aware that uh, there were elements uh, in the municipal space, especially from the workers' side, who are conniving with service providers. Vehicles were sabotaged. Just to make an example, a vehicle that is used for service delivery does not operate because it does not have a battery. So it's staying there at the depot because it does not have a battery. Or it does not have a permit, but the vehicle can, can operate but does, does not have a permit. And, and workers will then inform us that, no, they're not going to work because they're not going to get into that car because that car is not roadworthy. 
and, and and the official who's responsible to be paying for the for the permit does not even give us reasons why that does not happen. So we have put stricter measures now to ensure that everyone should do what he or she is being employed to be doing. And that does not overwhelm them. We have made sure that people report on time and go uh, uh, and uh, also uh, leave work uh, uh, on time. That is not also. Councillors could not, from the onset, accept the fact that there was this intervention. But it was only because after the minister introduced us and minister also put in the, uh, the decision of cabinet to cancel, some councillors did not understand exactly what was this intention of 139. But through our engagement with councillors, I am sure now that uh, there has been this understanding and, and our frequent reporting to them has created an understanding of why the intervention team is here and this collaboration, working good working relations between ourselves and councillors. They do their oversight. They do indeed in some instances become robust in ensuring that we do certain things because I've already indicated the challenges that we are having, especially on uh, sewer uh, uh, spillages, water uh, 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 leaks, and, 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 and at a time when we had portals all over the shore and councillors really indicated that, but why are you here if we do not see these things happening? Not taking, not forgetting that uh, we were only, in some instances, only two to three months in the area and we are trying to do things. I mean, we cannot be expected to be correcting all these things in three months or in the six months that the uh, cabinet, that cabinet has put us in here to undo the wrongs that were done over a period of 15 to 20 years. Because this uh, issue in Mangawung, they are so embedded to an extent that wrong things were made to be normal. They are, they are entrenched to an extent that when you start doing things differently, people are, no, are not used to doing things differently and then they will resist. That's where the sabotage and the resistance comes from. Let me make an example on this and not belabor the matter. That um, uh, uh, when we dealt with the issue of overtime, uh, people, and we suspect that that was uh, with uh, uh, our employees, they then closed the valves so that people could not get water. So that we were being called by councillors to say, but we know the only people who can get access to those valves are your employees who have the keys to the valves. And when we instructed them to go and open the valves, that's when they worked overtime because the valves were closed outside the working hours. So that was the kind of sabotage. And we suspect we then informed the police to accompany our officials to go and open the valves only to find out after two, three hours, the valves were closed again and there was no water in the city. So those are the few examples that I'm saying. There was some sort of sabotage in, in relation to the decisions that we are taking and uh, uh, correcting the wrongs that were there. The SCM uh, team has not been replaced. That's the team that we, we found here. There's a decision of council in the last council meeting that we need to investigate some of the allegations against the unit, as a supply, supply chain unit. And we have started uh, the, that particular uh, investigation and we are inviting anyone with information to come forward. But we are also, from our side, also looking into some of the actions, decisions that were taken by supply chain and to see whether there are any other possibility of wrongdoings there. Revenue collection, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's the percentage in relation to the current and area amount. Yesterday, when we were in the uh, provincial scopper, we were requested to uh, to give them the two separate uh, percentages in relation to revenue collection, current and arrear payments. And uh, I've instructed the finance unit to give us uh, uh, the, the, the figures on the two. And as soon as I have that, I will then give the secretariat uh, that particular information for uh, sharing with the honorable members. It is true that uh, uh, we had a meeting when I said successful meeting with uh, uh, the Premier's office and public works, it was in relation to the fact that in the past, we were informed that there has never been an engagement in trying to resolve the matter. 
And uh, I am not saying that the success was uh, the 33 million that has, that has been paid already and uh, the 86 million that uh, they, have, they are now going to pay this week, paying us and St. Lake. We are pushing the provincial department to make payment to us. But let me put this on record. I'm in parliament. The fact of the matter is we are given reasons why in the past payment could not be made. In the current budget of the provincial department, there is no provision for payment of the ARIA account to the municipality. That's a reality. They don't have the budget to pay that. So in the meeting, they became very clear to us that here is the issue. We, even the 86 million, they then have to take monies from all the departments that other department, provincial departments must reprioritize some of their uh, uh, targets to ensure that we at least have something to, to, to uh, uh, that they have something to pay on the ARIA account. They are paying the current account on, 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 on monthly basis. The problem is with the ARIA account. And, and uh, truth be told and reality be, be said that there is no budget at the provincial level. We have in, indicated that uh, we need to inform the Minister of National of, of Finance and the Minister of COCTA uh, for, for, for the intervention in relation to uh, the the budgeting process uh, to include this arrear account that is being owed to Mangawa. That's the reality of the matter as matter stands now. Even if you can cut on the arrears, the question, the, 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 the issue is we, we were told there is no budget on the arrear amount that has to be paid. Uh, I, I think that, uh, when I said success, it should be understood in that context that it will be counterproductive for us to cut now on the basis that they are unable to pay the two billion and so forth. We need to have some in further engagement in relation to the budgeting to allow this uh, area account. The shift uh, 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 the system, the, the shift system, yes, there should be recruitment of more people. I have uh, indicated that uh, the recruitment of uh, new members, of, of staff members, we are working on it because there has been a moratorium that was placed for approximately five years. And the, 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 the point that we are making here is that um, at the entry level, especially for uh, the uh, uh, people who are to be doing actual service delivery, we have started requesting all departments in the municipality to identify critical position, and critical, I'm not, I do I'm not mean a senior position, critical position for service delivery. And we are going to start advertising on critical, all, almost all in, the, in, the, in, in exclusion of finance. They have already given me their list of recruiting people at that particular level. So we will do that because as, you, as we are already saying, uh, Honorable Brink, you can't have the shift uh, 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 system introduced while there are no people who should be working shifts. So we are mindful of that particular thing and we are working on it. Honorable Mkalipi, uh, the issue of stability, uh, we, we are talking here about what happened before and what happened after our, our arrival at the municipality. Obviously, the council was not sitting regularly because of uh, uh, what, uh, what transpired at the time. But we also, we are mindful of the fact that MECO didn't sit, Section 80 committees did not sit, Section 79 did not sit, because the previous administration did not make it possible for them to sit. For example, where they initiate items to be taken to uh, the council committees and subsequently to, 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 to council. We have, when we arrived, started identifying, for example, compliance matters, which we drafted items for compliance and we took them to committees. We took them to MACO and to council. And council started, committees started to sit on a regular basis and committees then uh, 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 proposed certain things to be taken to council, which we did. Our involvement for now has made it possible that they are regularly uh, sitting and we are assisting councillors in relation to putting items 
not necessarily on compliance matters, but on service delivery matters that we are doing. Section 80 is sitting. Now that question of why is uh, the section 80 of infrastructure not sitting? There has been three attempts to make this uh, 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 council committee to set, uh, section 80 committee to set. The last attempt was last week. And we have, again, because there was a problem in relation to the, uh, 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 the availability of members of that committee. The chairperson has instructed and it's adamant that this must sit. And it has been set for the 27th of uh, this month for the uh, committee to set. All committees are set, as you have already indicated, Honorable Brink, Honorable uh, 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 Kalipi, and this uh, uh, committee will be sitting on the 27th of uh, October. There are many issues that this committee has to be dealing with because of the challenges that we are having, and we are going to prioritize that uh, this should sit. I've already spoken about um, the death of uh, the shop Stewart. The police are investigating, but uh, we are, under strict police guard, and uh, we do not want to expose ourselves to, to any danger. Uh, we have also uh, involved the police in looking at the risk assessment of some people that uh, have indicated to us that they suspect that their lives might, might also be in danger. The, uh, the changes that we are bringing, obviously they, will, they, they, they do uh, affect uh, uh, the stability of the municipality. I must indicate that the executive mayor, the speaker, and the deputy mayor, uh, because of what we do, they, they appreciate the kind of uh, work that we are doing. And in all their engagements, uh, even with uh, the outside world, they indicate the kind of changes that we are making. And uh, I think that also created some sort of stability administratively because of the support that they are giving us. There is no at this stage, there is no political interference in relation to the work that we are doing. Maybe it's because that we have been sent by national government and uh, uh, councillors are very you know, uh, uh, prone not to get too much into the, our area of work. It could have been difficult or different maybe if it was substantive uh, uh, executives that were in the municipality appointed by them. But in this instance, they know that we are from the national department brought by national cabinet and as a result, there is no attempt to change or to interfere in how we operate. The issue of ghost workers, uh, we have terminated the so-called ghost workers. I've, I've indicated that the reason why these people came, that was even before us, after November elections, local government elections, political parties, all of them, they gave a long list to the administration. The administration at the time then appointed these people without having followed the process of uh, 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 recruitment and selection. Hence, they were called ghost workers. We have since terminated their uh, contracts, and uh, that was in uh, May. And uh, we also made sure that uh, the uh, offices of political office bearers are only staffed now by temporary staff members, three to two per uh, political office bearers, until such time that we have reviewed the structure and the fully fleshed. Uh, uh, people will be appointed in those positions. So we are, we are done with this issue of ghost workers as it relates to the public office bearers. And uh, they even do not have the numbers that are uh, supposed to have in terms of the regulations of uh, 1 July 2022. And political parties have accepted our decision to terminate these contracts and to give them skeletal staff to man their offices whilst we are busy with the process of recruitment of uh, the, the, staff, the staff members in their offices uh, in accordance with the regulations. So this matter has been laid to rest. There is no, as it relates to public office bearers, there are no ghost workers uh, at the moment. Uh, the reduction of the departments. Uh, remember that the minister of COCTA uh, then uh, uh, developed what we call prototype organograms. And those prototype organograms was done after a thorough research for a different type and category and size of each municipality. So this prototype will then inform us that a municipality of the magnitude and size of uh, Mangawu, even if it's a metro, it's not a metro like other metros, will then have to have a particular organogram. So now when you take that particular organogram and you look at the regulations now, 
and that, that was promulgated recently, they also guide in relation to a metro of this size should be having so many departments. So the, the other departments have not been taken away, but they have been merged with other departments so that we do not have a organogram that is not fit for purpose. You cannot, because you are Mangaun, want to have an organogram that is like the city of Jobek or a Jobek, a Johannesburg metro. It can't be. So the, the prototype guided us in relation to us determining what should happen. And that was agreed upon at LLF. Uh, and uh, the, we even referred it to the subcommittee of LLF to thoroughly deal with it. We also have comments from national Cocta and from national treasury. That is why we are now taking this to council. And we are confident that uh, this reduced uh, 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 departments will then respond to the service delivery model of Mangaung as a metro, not for any other metro, but for Mangaung. And in Kofta, we do the same uh, in relation to other municipalities countrywide. I know for a fact because I'm, 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 I'm leading the, 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 the unit in the department that deals with this particular matter. Uh, the issue of when, whether when we leave, uh, the, the kind of progress that we've made, will, will that be sustainable? Uh, our mandate uh, was to be in this municipality for six months. And we are all doing this thing uh, with the anticipation of the six month period, which comes to an end, the end of October, 2022. We are trying to put systems in, play, in place that will defend themselves. The system that we're trying to put in place now, we want to make sure that whoever comes should not be in a position to can manipulate that particular system that we are putting in place. I said in my presentation that we are putting systems in all departments to make sure that there is sustainability. However, the decision of whether uh, we will be here beyond the October period, that has to be taken by our principals and I'm not going to delve too much into that. Safe to indicate that uh, we will continue even after the expiry of the six months period in accordance with section 154 of the constitution, we'll continue to support this municipality. And it will be proper that the team that has been assigned to uh, Mangaung will continue to give support. Remember, section 54 doesn't say COCTA, it says national and provincial. So all other departments with the people that have been deployed here will have to continue to support this municipality after the expiry of uh, our, our six month period. The conditional grant, why they were not spent in the past. It was because there was no proper project management. That is why in our areas, our focal area, we said we need to put in place procurement plans, reviewed procurement plans that will ensure that monies are spent. So this under expenditure on the conditional grant was not done during our era of this four months uh, period. It was done prior to that. And we have again resubmitted for, the, for this conditional grant to be given back because we have demonstrated with the review plan that we will have proper, uh, 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 proper project management and also we will, we will need to monitor the strict implementation of uh, the plan that we have developed. We, uh, National Treasury are aware of the, the issue that we, have, uh, that, that we have raised. The Minister of, uh, Human, of Human Settlement also accepted our uh, business plan that detailed on how we are going to monitor expenditure. And this is what uh, maybe will make sure that uh, uh, during our era, uh, uh, expenditure should be, should, should be made on the conditional fund. Uh, St. Lake, the matter, like I said, we, we initiate issues at uh, uh, committee levels. We then prepared this item to cancel which was then taken to section 18. It was debated to section 18 and it was referred to MACO. It went to MACO and it was then referred to council after MACO also agreed and accepted the recommendation from section 18 on the disbandment of this board because it is dysfunctional. It was withdrawn at council and uh, I might not know the reason why it was uh, withdrawn at council. Yesterday, even again at, at Scopa, the same question was asked and the executive mayor answered that in the next council meeting, this item will be 
uh, put before council. So from our side, we have done what is necessary to ensure that this item goes through the processes for it to be debated at, 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 at the council level. The physical consultants, that implicates the former mayor. I have indicated that uh, in the past that I've, I've uh, yesterday actually, that I have no privy to this uh, report. I have requested this report to be placed before me so that uh, there should be uh, implementation of the recommendations in that report. So I've not, I've not had sight of that, uh, of that uh, uh, report. The townships have uh, not been clear. We have agreed, and it is on the program that I was uh, showing when I was presenting, that uh, the townships, not only around Bloemfontein, because Mangaung is not Bloemfontein, there are other seven towns that forms part of uh, uh, Mangaung. We have agreed that with this, partnership that we are having with business and all that. All the townships and towns should be clean. We have worked it with the townships around Bloemfontein, and we have made it clear that um, even if we are working towards eradicating this uh, overtime, but we will have to work overtime, and during weekends I've already uh, uh, given them overtime for two weekends, for them to go and firstly remove the illegal dumping sites, and secondly, to work on the backlog, so that uh, when we then do the normal refuse removal and cleaning, at least the backlog is uh, is done with, and uh, also the illegal dumpings. And if you can see, even during the weekend, there were uh, municipal employees working, uh, removing those things. So we are not only concentrated on in Bloemfontein; we have also went to all the towns physically the seven towns around uh, 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 Mangaung to ensure that we see ourselves uh, what, is, what is happening in those areas. And uh, the situation was not promising uh, in terms of cleanliness. So we are turning to that. Uh, to that. Mark's our tennis report. The report was as a result of uh, the disciplinary action that has to be taken against the HOD of corporate services. We have received the report and we have given effect to the recommendations of the report. We have uh, initiated the charges against the three or two officials implicated in the report. We have requested Salga uh, through the advice of our DG that uh, Salga then has, has agreed to give us officials who will then be presiding over these disciplinary cases. And we have also, as per the recommendation of this matter, attorneys, we have also opened a criminal case against the, the, the alleged implicated officials by this particular report. So there has been action taken for, uh, in relation to this. In relation to uh, the, uh, the uh, UIFW, the, 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 the investigations thereof, we are awaiting that report. Once you get that report, proper actions will also be taken in relation to people who are implicated. We will also take the matter to to, 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 to MPEG. MPEG was not operational, like I said here. It's set for the first time since, since uh, uh, November after the elections. It's set for the first time when we presented before it. And the second sitting was when they were adopting that report that I made to, 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 to MPEG, and it was subsequently taken to council. So there will be consequences. There will be uh, steps followed after the report. We, we received the report from the attorneys that are doing the investigations. Purchasing of the graveyard, yes, there is. We are awaiting permit. We have applied for a permit, and once the permit is being given, then the graveyard will be will, will be developed there. But let me just uh, take some uh, few seconds in explaining the issue relating to graveyards. Uh, the graveyards obviously have to be done from the USDG grant, the conditional grant. We have had this a meeting. Uh, and the, the DM is aware of that. We had a meeting with uh, the Minister of Human Settlement uh, on the USDG. Remember that, uh, 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 and the minister said to us that we need to set priorities right. We have 450 million from the USDG. And if we are to prioritize for fencing graveyard or deal with sewerage spillages, Logic will detect that you will deep, then deal with sewage spillages, looking at the infrastructure, utilizing the money for that, rather than uh, prioritizing 
and a, a facing of graveyard and creation of graveyards and all that. We don't say it's not a priority, but we need to set our priorities right. Sewerage is spilling all over Mangawu, and that should be given a priority. Honorable Durago, on the uh, placement of Nalini and Sopan, I've already said that uh, we are now uh, uh, busy with the placement process, matching and placing. Now we're finalizing it. Because we have not done since Mangawu was promulgated the metro, like you rightfully said, Naledi and Sopan. We are now doing it, we are correcting it now. And uh, obviously, we will not finalize it uh, within the short period that we've been here. But like I said, we'll continue to support uh, Mangaung even after we have left, and we'll continue finalizing this process because we have started it. The disparity of salaries is as a result of this mismatching of uh, the other municipalities, small municipalities that were amalgamated in Mangaung. And no one was, was, was prepared to deal with this matter until we arrived in April. And we are dealing with this together with uh, the issue of salaries and the issue of disparities. The DG will inform you that um, because of this process that we are undertaking, Samu has indicated to us that there was an agreement in the past that uh, in order to bring, uh, to, 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 to deal with uh, disparity, all employees had to be given 40,000. All employees to be given 40,000 so that we deal with this issue of disparity and all that. We said we can't do that. Uh, it, is, it is not sustainable, it is not realistic that all employees should be given 40,000 rand. We are in dispute with Samu now because we said that can't be done. There is no money to can be doing that. The placement also should continue even after the organogram has been done because that's where, again, you'll have to do, once you're with the organogram, you'll have to do the placing. The water crisis, we are dealing with the matter, madam. Uh, we are aware of other areas where there is no water. We have agreed with Bloom Water and Coca-Cola that we are going to use our own uh, tankers to provide water to areas where they cannot get water. In the meantime, that we are upgrading muscle spur water treatment plant. So we, we are doing all this. And also Hamilton, uh, on last week, uh, there was short turning of uh, the upgrading of Hamilton uh, water treatment plant. So those two, two uh, plants, if, if they are effectively working, we will address the issues of people not getting water as far as webinar. So that's the kind of system that we're working. The budget system, uh, we, 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 it is unfortunate that we have a metro that still has the budget system. Not only the budget system, they've got what we call VIP uh, 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 toilets in, uh, in, in Tavancho and Butsabeli. And, and, and at this time and age, uh, when a metro still has the VIP, and the budget system, it is, it is unheard of. I know for a fact that government, even during the, the administration of the past, where there was a, a radical budget eradication a program that was in place. I don't know how it missed Mangawu. We need to have money set aside, make money available to eradicate this. That is a, a, a non-negotiable matter. We are, we are fixing the Butchabela Road. Uh, as I'm talking to you now, the resilient process is taking place in that particular area. Uh, the issue of uh, whether do we really have to, that's the, the, the same question uh, of whether uh, should we continue with the process of uh, uh, appointment of a municipal manager. Our mandate, part of it was to have this, and it's part of my uh, performance contract, that I should uh, have, I must have finalized this particular issue of appointment of a municipal manager, but I leave that to politicians to decide. I will do what uh, I, I was informed and instructed to, to be doing. Uh, Honorable Kaiser, the material impairment, as me as the successor in law, I was served with a notice from the office of the AG on this material impairment that uh, Honorable Kaiser is talking about. And I have given a explanation of the actions that I have taken since my arrival. And that was done before my arrival here. But as a successor in law, I had to deal with this matter because I'm facing a jail term in the event that uh, I do not respond to this. So we have responded to this. We have informed the AG in relation to what we intend doing. Uh, also reporting the issue to the law enforcement officers because that is a substantial money that was uh, misused there. And uh, we are working with the matter. I'm aware of this material impairment. In as far as last week, the AG also gave me a reminder of uh, me to give them the progress in relation to what we are doing as a municipality on the issue of this uh, material impairment. Irregular expenditure and debt, we have appointed 
uh, uh, Tawana attorneys to do the forensic investigation on under expenditure and irregular expenditure and uh, wasteful expenditure. And once that uh, becomes available, uh, we will take it, like I've said, to MPEC for a decision and also to council. And we will also follow the implementation of the recommendations of this because we will be paying for that particular investigation. The material losses of water, we are working together with uh, 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 Bloom Water to deal with uh, non-revenue water or water losses. I know for a fact that at national level, COPTA has got a dedicated pro project that deals with non-revenue water and non-revenue electricity. So we will also be having support from national COPTA to deal with this issue of non-revenue water or water losses so that uh, we successfully eliminate whatever uh, escalation of water losses. IPTN, you write it was in 2016, 2017, that's when it was started. The route was supposed to have been completed a long time ago, it was not done. Our intervention is we are now finalizing it and we've put ourselves a target that by October, the minister will have uh, launched that. And the road, most of the road, this was supposed to have been completed in 2019, it was not done. We will also be competing it this month for the uh, uh, introduction to be made. Economic stimulation, the LED, we are having an, an investment summit where we are going to be dealing with how we are going to place Mangangu back uh, to where it was in terms of being an economic hub of the province. We have identified the following. One, that uh, Tempe Airport, which is the property of the municipality, should be turned into a cargo airport. And, and that will also assist uh, uh, in, in making sure that, because Mangangu is in the center of the, of, of, of the country, and it is placed in a way that if you can make it an economic hub, not only of the province, but of the country. So we are saying, firstly, Tempe must be a cargo. There will be uh, 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 firms around that. Uh, secondly, there will be a technology hub, technology hub that is to be created around the two uh, 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 airports. That will be Tempe and, uh, and uh, uh, Brown Fisher Airport. That is that. Secondly, and, and uh, Minister Mbalula was informed about this ambitious project that we are going to be having to stimulate the economy and create employment. And again, resuscitate the rail uh, system, the rail infrastructure. Uh, Minister Mbalula has also given us a go ahead to, to think along those lines and to provide proper information and the research in relation to the resuscitation of that. We have also had a, a, a meeting with uh, Coca-Cola that we indicated. Coca-Cola has set aside 500 million for SMME uh, 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 injection. And they said they don't want to have uh, tax shops. They need to have sustainable businesses. And we are in the process of talking to them in relation to that. Those are some of the things that we are doing at LED level and not doing uh, vegetable gardens and all that. So that is what uh, our ambitious thinking are, are, are around that matter. The landfill site, uh, 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 the people who are on top of the landfill site with uh, the sharks there are not supposed to be there in the first instance. Whether they are from Lesotho, where they are not supposed to be there. And our removing them from there, the law indicates that we must remove them to an alternative space where there are services. And that's what we are going to be doing. We are not going to be removing them. And uh, maybe uh, 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 my, my understanding when, when uh, Honorable Teza talks about the, the taking away the economic activity, uh, 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 that is not going to be the case. We have said that we are going to take advantage of uh, the refuse for promoting SMMEs for recycling. So those people, in a, in a sense, they are doing recycling. That's where they reside there. We will ensure that that particular process and economic activity continues. So we will not be uh, just blindly removing them and uh, throwing them in the street. That's not what. That's not our, our intention. Honorable uh, Mpunza, uh, we we are. I've already answered the issue of the uh, amalgamation of certain departments into one. And yes, indeed, uh, Honorable Mpunza, you are aware that uh, I was with you in Sweden when I was uh, in one of the municipalities, and that's where I did project management, and that comes handy in what I'm doing in in Mangaung. Honorable uh, Khadebe, I've, 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 I've spoken about uh, the 
debt owed by government. And I think I've, um, I've, I've indicated that, that um, uh, we are in constant discussions with the Office of the Premier. We are also have uh, made it possible that we engage our ministers to assist as a result of uh, the province not having the budget to be doing this. On uh, the uh, security in sourcing, we have had a discussion with uh, the, the trade union and also civic organizations that we are marching to the offices that we should do the insourcing. Uh, the HOD uh, uh, police have already received a report from CIRA that deals with security guards. And uh, they've given us the two options of outsourcing with the figures and insourcing with the figures. We are taking this to section 80, the report that we received from CIRA, uh, CIRA we are taking it to section 80 and subsequently to council. Council will make a decision after we have given them that report that we received from, from CIRA. Uh, Honorable Butelezi, the partnership that we are having with Interstate and uh, uh, MTN, Coca-Cola, Vodacom, is of a very strategic nature in relation, firstly, to the cleanliness of the town. Secondly, to allowing SMMEs to make use of these companies to grow. And they have agreed that they will train people, they will give them uh, business opportunities, but they will also concentrate on beautification of the city, of, of the, uh, the municipality, including all other neighboring towns. Interstate have agreed to also make uh, uh, available other yellow fleet, because they have yellow fleet. They said they, will, they, they have agreed to give us yellow fleet before the rainy season so that we can regrade or regravel the roads that we have, especially in the live flying areas where there are farms and plots and all that. So that's the kind of uh, support that we are getting from this uh, 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 companies. And they said in the past, they were not given an opportunity to participate in all the projects that we are having because the municipality wanted money to be donated to it. But we said we don't want money. They must give us resources. They must partner with us. And then we continue working together. And Tatema Seco is engaging with all stakeholders, including civic organizations, to ensure that they do understand what kind of work are we doing. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. I think I've answered some of the questions and maybe the officials from uh, the NCR and from National Treasury and uh, my DG may add uh, where I've not uh, uh, dealt with all the matters. Thank you. Uh, DG. No, thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson. I just wanted to check in uh, whether um, Paul Masuko, uh, sorry, Paul would like to perhaps add anything from the NCR. Is the NCR rep in the meeting? Okay, uh, Chair, perhaps, perhaps if not, I can maybe just add one or two, two points uh, and maybe just to amplify one or two um, key points. Uh, the first one is just to do with the, with the actual Section 139.7 intervention itself in Mangalhoun. And I think the advantage that we have in Mangalhoun is the fact that we were able to, to uh, second persons from the MM level, uh, including all the hearts that uh, report to the MM into the intervention. And I think this is this um, for us then is something that we want to also look at more closely and see how it is that uh, we can use Mangalhoun as a blueprint uh, if and when others similar interventions might be required going uh, forward. Uh, the other point that I thought um, I should perhaps just uh, mention uh, was just around the, the success of ensuring that, uh, you know, elections are indeed made, uh, even at a national level. Uh, we are also ensuring that the departments who are, are owing uh, that we also impress upon them, and I have personally also 
uh, written to some of the departments to ensure that uh, they come to the party and they begin to also make payments. Uh, but this is also just generally across um, all municipalities. Uh, just one other point as well, just in terms of maintaining itself and our oversight at a national level. Um, I personally go to Mangawung every three weeks or so, uh, just to make sure that our plan that we've put in place is indeed being operationalized. Uh, and it's, include, it's inclusive, not only of a uh, boardroom meeting that I have with the team, but it's also inclusive of actual uh, physical uh, outside visits, um, so that we know that what is being reported is indeed being undertaken in practice. Um, from the, I think from the um, relationship perspective with 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 ESCOM, I don't think much was said about about that. But perhaps we can uh, bring that uh, more in our next uh, report. And just perhaps then also on the the issues as they would relate to the security of the team. I also just thought I'd am amplify that and saying that they, it does remain a concern uh, for all of us, but we have also undertaken the, the measures that we believe are needed to ensure that we secure the safety of our staff. Um, Chair, with your permission, I would then ask that we then provide responses to the um, you know, Gijima questions that were raised. <clears throat> but maybe before that, DJ, there's a hand of Kavita Rupla. Rupra. Okay. Can we allow her or him? <clears throat> okay. You. you can go ahead with Kavita. I uh, thought Kavita was on the intervention with Enoch Gijima, but go ahead, Kavita. Sorry, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you um, to the DG and good afternoon to, to the members of the committee and, and all present. Uh, Chair, I just wanted to make a comment uh, with regard to the issue that was raised by um, um, on, on the uh, FRP for Mangaroom and whether such an FRP is formulated, has it been shared with the, the council and are the requirements of the FRP being met? Uh, and I think what I wanted to say in this regard is when the mandatory intervention, the 1395 intervention was invoked by the province, the national treasury and not the provincial intervention team actually prepared that financial recovery plan. And that financial recovery plan was approved by the MEC for finance, I think in June, 2020. So that plan has been in implementation um, since then. Um, you know, the issue was that when the municipality was implementing the plan itself with the, the previous set of HODs, it was very difficult to make progress because a lot of the key issues that we identified were not raised and the willingness uh, sorry, we're not dealt with. And the willingness to deal with those issues was also not there. In particular, we talk about the overtime and, and the bloated organizational structure. Now that we've converted to a national intervention, that FRP is still in implementation. And what we are doing at the moment is that we are revising the status quo assessment. So once we've that status quo assessment is updated and, and the NCR and team are helping with that process, we will then use those inputs to update the financial recovery plan and, and then have it, um, you know, approved by the Minister of Finance. But there wouldn't be too much of a variation between the current financial recovery plan and the one that we are going um, to revise because the issues are basically the same. Maybe, the you know, some of the issues have deteriorated, but the NCR and team and the resources that were deployed have actually arrested much of the immediate issues that were raised in, in the financial recovery plan itself. So, you know, in just in order to, uh, um, uh, or just to, to mention that the implementation of the financial recovery plan, whether it is in Mangaung or Inok in Gijima, um, you know, municipality, 
actually requires the support of council and it requires the support of, of the municipal administration. And I think one of the councillors or, or one of the members, sorry, early, uh, raised an issue of the administrator earlier. Now, in both these municipalities, there is no administrator. Um, and an administrator can only be appointed um, as it states in the constitution, if there's no council. So because there's a municipal council in both municipalities, we were not allowed to appoint an administrator, so therefore we refer to them as the National Cabinet Representative and the support team. But it's important to mention that, you know, since we have the administration in place, since we have the council in place, the current legislative framework does not give much powers to the National Cabinet representative and team. And therefore, if we want to successfully implement the financial recovery plan, you know, we do require the cooperation from council and the administration. So in the case of Enoch and Gajima, you know, there is, there is an issue of getting that cooperation from, from the administration. And the NCR did recommend that the um, municipal manager, the accounting officer, and the chief financial officer be put on a precautionary suspension because they are failing to cooperate with the processes of the intervention. They are also failing to cooperate with the processes that we've put in place to recover a lot of the documentation. The municipal building was burnt down earlier this year and a lot of the documentation was destroyed. So if we want to implement consequence management, if we want to know what was really done wrong in the municipality, we require those documents. So as indicated, our minister was there yesterday and the accounting officer and the chief financial officer have been instructed to cooperate and to hand over their laptops and iPads and other devices. Um, and, you know, so, so the precautionary suspension has uh, been put on hold temporarily. But should they fail to, to cooperate, then obviously we're going to need to, to um, you know, support the NCR and, and the team in, in putting them on a suspension. Um, also, just to mention with Enoch and Gajima, you know, um, and, and the role of council, and, and the whole process to deal with the defiance from the municipal manager and the chief financial officer. The NCR has reported that two council meetings were convened where he was supposed to come and explain the situation and, and get council to decide or, or to act on how to deal with the administration. But these meetings were canceled, you know, on short notice. And, and he did indicate that even the justification for the cancellation of the meeting, you know, was not um, appropriate. Um, so just to reiterate, in both municipalities, the FRPs are in place. In Inok and Kijima, we are in an advanced stage of revising that financial recovery plan. It has been taken to council. It's been taken to the business forum, it has been taken to a whole range of stakeholders. But with Mango Metro, um, Metro, we are in the process of updating the status quo assessment. And based on that, we will then revise the financial recovery plan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, uh, you can continue, DG. I was just seeing the hand there. No, thank you, Chairperson. With the permission, I'll then just ask for um, and Paul to respond on the Enoch Kijima questions, and I'll yes. come in if there's anything that's left. Thank you. No, thank you very much, uh, Gigi. And um, um, thanks, Kavita, for also, uh, also following through in terms of responding to the uh, matters or questions raised by members with regard to the Enoch Kijima challenges. Um, <clears throat> The, in responding directly to uh, the question raised by member um, Kalipi, um, you know, um, whether the, the intervention will work. Um, you see, if you compare what's happening in Mangaui and also it was, it, it, it was what is happening in Ino Mugijima, uh, the, the difference is that now in Ino Mugijima, we are still, uh, still made it or, or, you know, it's, a, it's an interim impasse that we must dislodge. And I think um, uh, where we are sitting uh, as, as, as national government uh, with the support of our political leadership, 
that is, is will happen shortly, and as soon as it is happening, um, uh, there will be uh, there will be movement, you know, and uh, we, we because the, the resolve to make sure that the intervention works, we have it as national government. All we we require is just a space, and we are encouraged by the fact that there is political support. The previous administration did not support the intervention, and there was poor oversight. But this current leadership led by Councillor Executive Mayor Bunu and the council, they are, there is commitment and they, and we just need to deal with this this, this challenge of, 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 that, of management. And when it is done, it should be able to, to so I, to, to, to we will be able to report at our next meeting to you. We should be reporting comprehensively on the progress that we have made, but you will see also that we are starting from a very uh, a negative deficit in terms of uh, document, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, credibility and information, a platform that has eventually been destroyed. So we have to reconstruct it, but definitely at the minimum we'll be doing is to stop a lot of uh, uh, wrong thing that has been done uh, in the past. And then uh, we, we start the journey of ensuring that the, uh, um, all the the, uh, the 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 right thing that needs to be done in the municipality are implemented, and the issue of oversight, uh, as you can have seen in Mangau, the DG is is uh, is going into the in metro every three weeks, uh, supported by the deputy minister. In some cases, the minister goes through. We will also do the same in in, in Okumugijima because we are serious about this interview. It cannot fail. It has to. It has to uh, 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 succeed. And we will do everything within our powers to make sure that it does succeed. Uh, per se. My last input, maybe response, is to uh, Member Mpumza. Uh, in terms, uh, as he, he indicated about the issue of cash injection. Yes, in terms of this intervention, um, uh, Treasury has got a position. You know, uh, cash injection. We know. We all accept. But. There are things that have happened, and money has been lost, and uh, in the municipality, there must be consequences. We must chase those those money that has been lost, and also uh, because it's no use, the leakages that has been there must be closed, and and then when there is comfort that there is a good threshold of of accountability and 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 reporting, in terms of the uh, the, the, the the expenditure that has been kept in the municipality. It will encourage that uh, uh, in Lekwa, some of the monies will be coming from it, it into complementing the MIG project and some, uh, uh, some of the development. So all I'm indicating is that uh, uh, you, you, you can't just come in and really inject a money. You have to really deal with the leakages. And also you must chase the money wherever it has gone wrongfully and ensure that uh, uh, as you do that, the threshold is really restored uh, to a particular level, which will give comfort to all of us to can uh, invest in in the in the municipality. I will pause here, Chairperson. Uh, uh, Thanks. Uh, thank you. I think uh, Deputy Minister is she back? Okay. Yes, Chair, I am back. Oh, okay, welcome. I've been in and out. My sincere apologies. I'm struggling. I'm connected to a phone now. Okay. Let's um, go back to Parliament now, Chair. <laughs> I'm actually on my way uh, to Parliament uh, this afternoon, so I might as well stay there. <laughs> Great I man. agree. I agree on that. Kalipi. Chair, thank you very much. But honestly, I wouldn't say much because I did miss quite a lot of the responses. Um, I think it was Honorable Mpumza who was on the platform when I started getting cut. And I didn't hear none of the uh, responses. But suffice to say, our commitment really is to what uh, Honorable Mahale is saying. Honorable Mkhalipi, we may not narrate how many times we have gone to Mangao to begin to scratch the surface. Uh, and I think we need the same level of energy and commitment in Enokum Kijim. We hope we will get it right. But we can also assure the committee where we are facing difficulties, we'll be honest to you and we'll unpack them. We possibly should find solutions together and attempt to implement them. Chair, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable DM. Uh, I think Honorable Members, uh, 
Uh, this was, uh, we allowed all the members to raise everything. We also allowed elaborate responses, but if there's any follow-up that uh, some members would want to or wish to, but I think the conversation was more open. And, uh, but I'll take the hands if there are any. I, for now, I don't see a hand. If that could be the case, then uh, uh, DM, if there's anything before we close. Not on our side, uh, Chair. I would like to appreciate the opportunity of the committee has given us and uh, echo the uh, commitment that we will have to continuously be uh, in support of local government programs. Thank you. Okay, I see the end of Honorable Kalibi. Chair, you'll forgive me if uh, the MM, acting MM of Mangaung, uh, our DDG, if he responded on my two questions in regards to Sentlek uh, as, uh, as a board who is dysfunctional on, on, as well as on phase the consultant report, if he does have those uh, uh, feedback. If he doesn't, I will, I will welcome the, the written report or the written responses on those two issues. Thanks, Chair. Uh, DDG, uh, I, I remember there was something that talked about this Sentlek. I don't remember the other one. If if there's any comment from you. Yes, uh, I Chairperson. I think I've indicated that uh, with regard to St. Lake, uh, we have dealt with the matter at uh, Section 80, and uh, the matter was to be dis discussed at Council, and uh, the Mayor has made the commitment that this matter, because it's an item of the Mayor, it was so, it also served at Mayor. So it will be, as, as per the commitment of the executive mayor, this will be set before the next council. Uh, we, the council, the, the section 80 and the LACO have proposed that St. Lake should be disbanded and we should start the process of um, uh, uh, having the new board. We should advertise and having the new board uh, being appointed by council because as per the rules, council is the one that appoints the board of St. Lake. So that's where we are now because there are only two members left at St. Lake. And with regard to that uh, report, I've indicated that I have not seen the report. I've requested the report because even yesterday at Provincial Scopa, that was the issue. And as soon as I have the report, I will then be responding even uh, in a written form to the Honorable Member. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, then close the meeting with the hope that uh, the commitment you have uh, demonstrated to say you may not fail in these two interventions. Uh, that failure actually would uh, uh, affect the people because I think the intervention is meant to save the people from ourselves. When I say ourselves, we also include uh, the three spheres of government. And uh, you would not only fail the people, you would also be failing the country. Uh, because uh, like we are saying, this is the last hope now for the people. And this is the last line of defense of the people because this is our national government. Now, once a decision is taken by cabinet, I think everybody else must be educated as to what this thing means. And then we can't uh, uh, you know, allow uh, such people to distract us from what government is supposed to do as expected by the people. So that uh, uh, non-cooperation by Inokum Kijima it's, it's, a, it's the biggest test of government. And uh, because actually that is what people are exposed to daily. So once you have an example that you must demonstrate the capacity of government to deal with wrongdoing, this is an opportunity. And I think everybody is not uh, keen
to miss that. And uh, with those few words, I think for the briefing itself, getting a sense as to what is being done, it gives us hope. Thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, Bula. Thank you. Long live, long live the chair. Yeah, Thank you, Chair. 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 I wonder how we going back to Parliament, Chair. Uh, <laughs> I, well, well, you, I'm told you sit in the Chief Whips Forum. Tomorrow, Mkali. <laughs> it can be tomorrow. Any instruction from those forums will be uh, accepted. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll talk to you privately, Chair. Recording. St